Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. Ashok Kadasha Rock, Happy New Moon, everybody. Um, uh, happy New Moon, eighth month. Happy New Brew, No Chew. Nah, no folly, no folly. Inside joke. Happy New Brew Moon, eighth month, Israel. Kwam Uh So, your elder priest Sabak is coming to y'all with another short lesson. For the new moon, um, we didn't gather uh, together out here in HOI Los Angeles. Um, you know, we just came off of Tabernacles and we prepared for some other things. So um, we just uh, thought it would be wise to go live and everybody just keep it from home. Um, but uh, we will definitely be having more gatherings and all the gatherings for the feast days most I will in the future as the congregation grows. And we get things more established. But with that being said, by way of technology and the spirit, we can still gather together for the Lord's new moon. All right. So um, tonight is the new moon, eighth month, so-called October uh, 24th, 2022 at even. Um, it's the new moon, eighth month, and we are commanded. Right, we are commanded by the Most High and the Mashiach Yahweh to come together for the new moon ceremonies. All right, we are commanded to come together for <clears throat> uh, Shalom, everybody. Shalom, Yakanan. Um, Shalom, I think I seen Chief coming there. Um, Shalom, Brother Jeff Lyles. Shalom, everybody. Uh, we are commanded by the Most High to keep all his feast days, his new moons, his Sabbaths, and his feast days. All right, so that's exactly what we're doing. All praises to Yahweh by Shem Mashiach All right, I think that's Obadiah that just came in. Shalom. Um, so, tonight, once again, is the new moon, eighth month. Like I said, we're going to hit a quick couple of precepts and... Um, Get into new, the new moon, all right? But first, we're going to open with the Lord's Prayer. Um, everybody rise and face the east. Imagine we upon your Jerusalem or the east, Jerusalem, uh, for opening prayer. Lord's Prayer, opening prayer for new moon, eighth month. Come here, Shadow. Imagine we upon your Jerusalem, stand and face Jerusalem or the east for opening Prayer, open the Lord's Prayer for the new moon service. All right, Matthew 6, 9 through 13, Lord's Prayer. Abanawa, Shabbat Shemayim, Kodash, Hayah, Shemka, Yahweh, Melakwafka, Daba'a, Ratazaka, Hayah, Aisha, Baratiza, Kawa, Hayah, Bashemayim, Natalanawa, Lacham, Ko, Yawam, Wasalaknawa, Kabawafinawa, Kasalaknawa, Kabawafinawa, Wala a tabi nawa banasaya one a bowl how shai nawa man ra kaya la ka hamalakwa wa ala wa ta para fly volumyum a man Haloya 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 Our Father Yahweh which child in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. By Hashem Mashiach, Yahweh Shai, the water of man. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. All right, amen. Just a quick opening prayer, Israel, uh, for the new moon. All right, all praises to Yahweh, by Hashem Mashiach, Yahweh Shai. Um, that was the Lord's Prayer, Matthew 6, 9-13. Right, Barakata Yahweh, Ba Shema Mashiach Yabashai, Ma La Salakia, Kadashirak. All right, Blessed Omosa Yahweh, Ba Shema Mashiach Yabashai, The Water, Um, Asha Kadash, Um, Yurak, The Water for the New Moon. All right, The Water for a Happy New Moon. All praise to Yahweh, Ba Shema Mashiach Yabashai. Right. Just a little thanks in the ancient Paleo Hebrew tongue. Um, so tonight, before we touch on, we'll get a couple of a uh, handful of new moon scriptures. Um, you brothers and sisters should be familiar with the new moon scriptures. 
um, that, uh, you know, we go over monthly, um, but we'll give you some. Um, if you're not familiar with them, go back to some of our old HOI videos, older HOI videos on the new moon. Uh, Shalom Joshua. And um, get edified on the new moon scriptures. Shalom Solomon. Uh, Shalom OG in the building. Shalom OG. Shalom Obadiah. All right. Brother Obadiah, most I will see you back in the D um, soon, brother. Most I will see you back in the D soon. Um, that was uh, that was uh, a mighty, mighty uh, trip. You did a nice video, too. I checked it out on your channel. That was a good video you did. Uh, Shalom Mataf. Um, Shalom, brother Travis. Yah Mosaic. Shalom. Brother, is that a new moon scripture? Okay, yes, it is. Ezekiel 45. Okay, brother. <laughs> you be posting a lot of scriptures, brother. They got to be on topic, King. They got to be on topic. All right, so Shalom, everybody. Everybody's coming in the building. What y'all doing up so late on the East Coast? Well, if y'all on the East Coast, Shalom, brother Joseph, brother Yawasop, HOI East Coast in the building. What state you in today, brother? <laughs> That's HOI East Coast, man. That man be all up and down the East Coast border. What state you in today, brother Yawasop? Where you kept the new moon at? Call me a shallow. All praises. Um, but yeah, uh, what is it, about 12? 12, 1230? Oh, you, you stay home tonight, huh? Car, call me a shallow. All praises. Israel, get around, boy. HOI, get around. All right. Um, but anyway, all praises, family. Um, so, yeah, man, I'm home with the family tonight on the West Coast. The best coast. Nah, just kidding. No folly. Um, Shalom, yes, Zebulon. Yeah, it's all good. Just chiming in, showing some love. Shalom, Zemara. Shalom, everybody. So, tonight, yes, yeah, 1230 on the East Coast, um, Eastern Time. So, tonight... Um, we're going to go into the new moon eighth month, but before, you know, a little pre-lesson tonight, I want to focus on staying on fire in this truth, staying on fire in this truth. We must continue to give y'all these self-improvement classes. That is very important. All right. We can get into sensationalism. We can get into Kanye West. We can have damn near fights at the camp and y'all can be entertained, all that. But Israel needs that self-improvement and you need to stay on point and keep under your spirit. That's very important. That's very important for your endurance. We can give y'all all the other fly hype stuff that grab y'all attention, all right? Y'all want to see the arguments and the fights and the debates at the video. That's all good, but... What you going to do for your spirit in this truth, Israel? That's the thing that's going to keep you. Every other, All the other stuff is just part of the work. It's part of the affliction and the endurance in this truth. All right, so stay on fire for this truth, Israel. Okay, so like, let me grab um, some of my notes here. Um, stay on fire. So we're going to get just a, a handful of precepts. All right, of course... Any topic is a three, can easily be a three, four, five hour topic because there's so many precepts that you can pull on each topic. But I'm going to just give y'all a few tonight. Keep it short and sweet for the new moon. And uh, that'll do. So um, we are here, Salakia. Salakia, uh, um, yeah. We are here um, for the new moon, um, eighth month. So, like I said, tonight we're going to get into the topic of staying on fire for this truth. Stay on fire for this truth, Israel. You cannot. And understand this, brothers and sisters. This is not a shot at nobody. This is not, you know, to uh, uh, weaken anybody's faith. This should strengthen your faith. But... We go through things in Israel. I see different circumstances. Y'all know how I, y'all know the elder. I'm, I'm repetitious. All right. 
I see different things happening in Israel and it sparks me to speak about it because I see it with different brothers and sisters. In HOR, yeah, I'm going to get on my own camp. In HOR and in all of Israel as a nation, I see things. People come to me. People come to me from different camps. People come to me from all over Israel. Individual lights come. And, uh, uh, people say, I'm not under no camp, but they come to the elder of, of a camp to get counseling and help. But I ain't under no camp. I don't deal with these camps. But as soon as you go through some affliction, you run into the damn elder of a camp to get some help. You think we got the magical scripture to solve your problem. Not taken away from the scriptures, of course. The scripture speaks about everything. But a lot of times, y'all got to put in the work along with the scriptures to solve your problem. That's what I mean when I say, of course, the scriptures has power to heal or fix any situation. But when I say magical scripture... A lot of y'all, you don't want a fellowship. You don't want to be under no camps. You're an individual like, but the second you get in a problem, you want to come to the elders to get uh, 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 advice and help. And, and, and uh, the magical solution to your problem. Or we're going to give you a scripture, wisdom, experience, and uh, we're going to give you advice to the best of our ability. And I don't like to tell people what to do. I tell them, hey, maybe this is what you should do. Maybe this is what I would do, but I'm not telling you to do what I would do. Do what you think is best. All right? Shalom, babe. So tonight, as a pre-topic, keep, uh, stay on fire in this truth, Israel. That same zeal and fire, that bright-eyed, bushy-tailed you had when you first came in this truth, keep the same diligence. Keep that same fire. Now, a lot of y'all see things. Don't get me wrong. A lot of y'all come into the truth and y'all see faults. Y'all see sin. You see shortcomings. You see situations happen. And that you lose your faith because you put more trust in man. It's okay. Y'all see us on YouTube. Y'all see us out in the street teaching. You see us shutting the people down. Strong power. You watched us for, for months or a couple of years on YouTube, on your uh, flat screen TV. So we damn it like... Righteous celebrities to you. And then you met us and you came into the fold. Not just us in HOI, any camp or whatever. Then you saw we're human beings. We have faults. We have shortcomings. We have sin also. So a lot of y'all is short circuit your spirit. And you say, well, damn, I thought these men, you know, I thought they was like the angels in heaven. No. The apostle Paul said, all have sinned and come short of the glory of the most high. All right. So. Yeah, that, that that's that's what I'm talking about now. A lot of y'all are hesitant to fellowship. Because of past experiences, that's understandable. That's exactly what I'm talking about now. But I don't mind if a brother or sister not don't fellowship. Do what you need to do for your spirit. But stay on fire in this truth. Keep that same zeal and love that you had for the truth when you first came in. A lot of y'all come in and y'all experience different things. And then now your spirit is short circuit. Some of y'all damn near walk away from this truth. No, you should never let your experiences and what other people do. Never let it put out your fire for your when your was shot. Y'all know I always say it. You know the stuff that I've been through in the nation. And I said, listen, that's the people. Oh, that's me when I was going off and I was weak. That ain't got nothing to do with Yahweh and Yahweh Shai's word and this purpose of building this nation. So you got to keep that same fire and zeal that when you first saw that YouTube video, when you first saw me rebuking the hell out of a white man and you never seen a black man talk to a white man like that. When you seen them bowing down and kissing our boot, when you seen us rebuking the demons and we had a scripture and an answer for everything and you just... You was open. Keep that same fire because you're going to see things along the way. All right. So I don't want to keep rambling on. Let's get to the scriptures. All right. Let's get to the scriptures. Shalom, sister Yash. All right. Um, let's get to the scriptures. We're going to start with Luke. Let's go to Luke chapter 14 and verse 30 and verse 25. We're going to start out with Luke 14. And 25. All right. You need these self-improvement classes. Israel, I always say it. You need it. You need it. You need it. Keep it in your life. 
All right, Luke, we're going to start at 14 and verse 25. Shalom, Sister Kiara. All right, everybody's coming in the building. Y'all kind of late with the elder. That's good. Well, some of y'all on the West Coast with me, so it's not as late. But um, Shalom, family. So take notes, y'all. Get, get your Bible, Apocrypha, um, your notepad. And if you don't do it now, right, right. <laughs> Khan, y'all were cunning, Khan. Hot rain, sleet, snow. You know, this brother, this brother hot or dumb, this brother knew me since 2003. And this brother could testify I done kept the same spirit. Not trying to brag or boast or nothing, but this brother, this is going on 20 years, this brother know me. Uh, two, 2023 is in two months. This brother's known me since 2003. I kept the same fire and zeal. They, this brother know me almost 20 years. He can testify now. I've been the same since the brother met me. The scriptures say, don't let, don't praise yourself. Let him up, another man. Not even, I'm, I'm going to be humble about it. Not even praise. Acknowledge. All right? So y'all don't get simple. Oh, see, the nigga's proud. You want, nigga, you want men to praise him. Right? You know, as again, saying nigga will make it, it will take and uh, make a, a, a 20 minute, 25, 30 minute video out of any little thing you say. So let me put up my disclaimers, but they're going to do it anyway. But this brother, um, a dumb on a comment board, right? That brother know me for years, man, 2003. You know, and and I kept the same spirit by Hashem HaMashiach Yahweh Through the spirit of the Most High, Yahweh by Hashem HaMashiach Yahweh I ain't never waver, none of that. You couldn't come to me with no damn doctrine. And I thank the Most High for giving me that strength. All right, so um, without further ado, let's go to Luke chapter 14 and verse 25. All right, let the scripture speak. I've been running my mouth long enough. Luke 14, 25. And there went great multitudes with him, and he turned and said unto them, If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Now, Yahweh Shah didn't literally mean hate, meaning you can't put anything before this work. You can't put mother, father, right? You, you, can't, you can't put mother, father, sister, brother, even your own life. In other words, what Yahweh Shah is saying, sometimes you got to sacrifice for this work. Sometimes you might have to say, hey, mom, I can't do such and such and such because I got to be at the camp. It's the Sabbath. I got to be at the feast day. Hey, Pops, I would love to go fishing with you, but let's do it Sunday afternoon. I can't do it Sabbath afternoon because I got I to gotta go to Sabbath class or I got to go to the camp. All right. Oh, uh, 12, 10 o'clock Saturday morning, you want to go fishing, Pop? Oh, no, I'll be getting up, getting ready for Sabbath class at that time. I'll be getting up, studying, going over my precepts, ready to go to camp at that time. We can go another time when it's not the Shabbat and I'm not doing some work for the Lord, Pops, but I can't do it then. That's what Yahweh Shah mean by that. Not literally hate. Because the scriptures come back and tell you in the law, honor thy father and thy mother. And I'm, I'm, let me say this, man. I was, having a, I was having a discussion with another brother today. All right, I won't say the brother's name, but uh, how, uh, dumb, how a dumb know him. Right, Yahweh kind of know him. Uh, another, another old school HYK brother. And we were saying how a lot of y'all, you come in. And you have bad relationships with your family. You think you got to be nasty and cut your family off or whatever because they still in the world. Now, don't get me wrong. Some of y'all, your family are a bunch of damn demons, too. And they start to alienate you. And, and um, oh, somebody messaging me with some stupidity. Come on, brother. All right. I'm on the live. But anyway. You feel you have to, uh, your family can be off sometime and you gotta, you gotta, you gotta stop dealing with them, right? You gotta, um, this brother sending me damn messages. You can't see that I'm on, I'm live on Facebook, brother. But anyway, Salakia, um, I'm gonna rebuke the hell out of him when I get off of here. Um, but a lot of you have bad relationships with your family because of this truth. They say you crazy, they cut you off, they start condemning you. I've had I've had uh people in the truth say family members want to fight them. It got so heated, family members want to fight them. So in that 
case you got to keep your distance from your family. But if your family's still at peace with you, they don't hinder you from serving the most high Yahweh Shai, you can have still have a good relationship with them. Use balance and wisdom, Israel. And if you're in the spirit of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, a lot of times the most high will put a spirit on your family to still be at peace with you. Even if they don't agree, the most high put a spirit on them to put uh, have peace with you. So you got to understand that. So when Yahweh Shah said hate, he didn't literally mean hate. He meant you can't put anything or anyone before this truth. You have to balance it out. You can't eat a pork chop just because your brother say, oh man, come on, you at my house. You know you got it. Nah, brother, I love you. You my brother, but I don't eat no swine. Shalom, Sister Wanda. H.O.R. Memphis in the building. All right, so that's what it means. So read on. And whosoever doeth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. So that goes with tonight's topic. Stay on fire for this truth. Yahweh Shah said you got to bear your cross. Meaning what? You're going to take on some of the same afflictions and sufferings as Yahweh Shah for this truth. You can't get... Um, you can't have a little bit of tribulation and then you fall off. No. Everybody write down Matthews. The 13th chapter. We're not going to get it, but that's homework for y'all. That's the parable of the sower and the seed. And Yahweh Shah showed you the different categories you can fall into when coming into this truth. Some of y'all might come in and be strong and good and bear much fruit. But some of y'all to care of the world, deceitfulness of riches, the wicked one come and they take you away from this truth. You got to stay on fire, Israel. Stay on fire. You got to be in this truth. If you 10 years in... You got to be like you was 10 days in. When you had that zeal and fire, you were so happy. You got to keep that spirit, Israel. Duh, Israel is off, huh? I might as well go back in the world because you ain't no better than the people in the world. The people in the world are the same. Y'all ain't no different from the people in the world. No. Remember, we came out of the world. A lot of us still coming out of the world. We are a damaged people. And unfortunately, some of us drag some of that stuff into the truth. And guess what? When you see brothers and sisters in the truth that know they Israel and they off as hell, you separate from them and you get with the brothers and sisters that's trying to serve the most high Yahweh Shah in the spirit. But you got to bear your cross. Yahweh Shah said you got to go through the same pain and affliction and suffering as me. Otherwise, you can't be my disciple. You can't be a, a follower of mine to do this. I can't use you. In other words, you're not worthy because you can't deal with the affliction you're not staying on fire for this truth. You're going to fall by the wayside. So I can't use you. I might as well get rid of you now. All right, 25, 28. For which of you intending to build the tower, sit if not down first and count off the cost, whether he has sufficient to finish it. So that's like a, 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 a um, real estate company wants to build a new building. Now, the building, the way you want the building, it costs $10 million. You can't come with $2 million and expect a $10 million building. No. So likewise, Yahweh Shah saying, when you come into this truth, you have to count the cost. You have to read these scriptures, study, learn, and see what you're up against. See what you're going to fit. Because the scriptures tell you about all that. That's why a lot of y'all, we tell y'all, study when you come into this thing. Read these scriptures because the Bible is going to explain to you things that you're going through, even while you're going through it. When your family's mad and, and treat you funny and you're like, damn, my cousin, my, my sister, my uncle, my grandmother, my brother. Why is everybody acting funny amongst me? Because what Yahweh Shah said, who's my mother, my brother, my sister, my uncle, father, cousin, even though I didn't use those titles. He said those that do the will of the father. Sometimes the people in the truth. Have to become your family more than your worldly family. Or you can build bonds with people in the truth and still keep a cordial relationship with your family That's at the same time. That's a blessing. All right, so understand what you're up against. You got to, when you come into this truth, you got to read and study and give yourself time. You can't be six months in the truth and go through a little something, then you want to run back into the world. No, you got to give yourself time because experience is the best teacher. Then your spirit going to turn over and then you're going to say, damn, I've been through all that stuff. 
I thought I would have ran out of this truth, but no. Now the Most High showing me what I, where I really need to be, and He showed me all that for examples. Now I understand. Y'all got to keep that fire, Israel. Read on. It says that less happily, after He have laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock Him. Ah, uh, then you you had the first two million to build a foundation. Now you need the other eight million to finish the building. Man, you ain't even know what you was doing. Look, the foundation be sitting there for 10 years. This guy couldn't finish the building. Same thing with this truth. When a lot of y'all lose this fire, what's going to happen to you? You're going to go back in the world. Or you're going you gonna to become an, a person that know you an Israelite, but you just regular. But people going to be like, hey, what happened? Didn't you used to be out there on the corner with the brothers? Didn't I used to see you with them strings on you? Didn't you used to keep the Sabbath? They're going to start mocking you. But they're going to say, what happened to that Israelite stuff you was in? So you got to keep the same fire. Reading on. It says saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. And you know, our people can be cold. A lot of y'all say, I might as well go back in the world if I'm going to deal with this. You go back in the world and Jake and Eve will mock the hell out of you. What happened to your righteous Jesus Christ? Hebrew stuff. You know how our people are. What happened to that Israelite stuff? Them crazy Power Rangers yelling on the corner. Oh, you're not following that no more, huh? Hey, Shalom, Sister Leah. How you doing? Long time no see. All right. Good to see you, sis. I got I to gotta talk with you when you get a chance. All right. Um, so read on. It says, Or what king goeth to make war against another king? Sit, sit of not down first and consult of whether he be able with 10,000 to meet him that cometh against him with 20,000. You know, it's a good example of that. We are about to come into it. The Maccabees story and the um, story of Hanukkah. Remember Judas and the Maccabees? A lot of times when you read um, them beginning chapters, you get into chapters 3 and 4 and 5 of, of Judas and the Maccabees and, and the Apocrypha. A lot of times Judas and Israel, they had smaller portions of men than the heathen did. But what happened? They prayed to the Most High. They knew the Most High was with them. So likewise, the Lord said a king, when he go to war, he got to consider, is it possible I could still defeat this 20,000 with my 10,000? That's how Judas was. Judas said, listen, with 5,000 men, we're going to defeat 60,000 men of the heathen because we got the spirit of the most high. So likewise, when y'all go to the spiritual war, being in this truth is spiritual war. When you go to the spiritual war, you got to say to yourself, I can fight this spiritual war. Shalom, everybody coming in. Shalom, Maureen. Shalom, Sister Michelle. Shalom, young Hebrews woke. Shalom, everybody. You got this. This truth is a spiritual war. So you got to say to yourself, can I defeat Satan with all the devices he going to come at me with? And I'm still kind of new or weak to the faith. Yes, I can do it if I put the most high and Yahweh shall first and pray and he have the angels around me. I can fight this war against Satan. All right. Reading on. It says, um, or else while the other is yet great, great, so like a great way off, right? He sendeth an uh, ambassage and desireth conditions of peace. Meaning he sends someone to say, you know how they used to say in the street, yo, we don't want it, son. All right. Nah, we don't want it. Because what? I don't think I can fight this war. But you got to stay strong. You got to count the cost. You got to know, wait a minute. You know what I'm saying? Can I fight this spiritual battle on Yahweh and Yahweh Shah? Am I going to let the Most High Yahweh Shah come into me and let allow me to fight this good fight of faith? Keep that fire. Keep that diligence. Keep that faith and stay strong in his truth. All right. Reading on it says, so likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsake of not all that he have, he cannot be my disciple. That's like that's what Timothy, what Paul said in Timothy. He said, "No man that warreth." Uh, second Timothy is the second chapter, I believe it is. He said, "No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life." So when Yahweh Shah said in Luke uh, fourteen thirty three, so likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. Meaning what? Like Paul said in Romans the eighth chapter. Nothing can separate us from the love of Yahweh. Now, did, did Yahweh Shah mean 
Listen, just give up all your, your, your money, your house, everything. No. When he said forsake, meaning you can't put nothing before this truth. You cannot compromise this truth for nothing. Yes, you got to live your life. You got your house, your car, your job, whatever. He didn't mean forsake in that sense. Meaning this life, your life, this world, these material things, they cannot be more important than the truth. You got to keep that fire in your Havishah. So this, this is a perfect example when you brothers and sisters, when the spirit call you into this truth, you got to sit down and count the cost. And you have to learn, read these scriptures. You got to go through experience. You can't just give up right away because that's what Satan wants you to do. The first little sign of affliction, you running. No, you got to fight. You got to fight. And I could tell you, y'all know I always say it, almost 30 years, going on 30 years in this truth. I done, I done, seen, I done seen damn near a little bit of everything. And if something else come along, that won't surprise me. I'll be like, damn, just when I thought I saw everything. But I, I got to keep this fire for Yahweh and Yahweh Shah. I got to keep, keep this uh, a spirit in me for this truth. All right, so I'm reading on. Salt is good, but if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? What is slack here? Wherewith shall it be seasoned? What if salt loses flavor? It's savoriness. Like, damn, you know what I'm saying? This food is kind of bland. Let me put some salt on the door, make it taste a little better. Ah, okay, you know what I'm saying? But if the salt ain't got no flavor, you're like, damn, I, I can't eat this food. It's, it has no seasoning as it is. Then the damn salt didn't even help it. Because the salt is, is, is not, uh, it's old or it's whatever the case may be. All right, so what is salt without flavor? It serves no purpose. So if you come into this truth and you're not enduring, and you're not keeping the commandments, and you're not staying in Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, you're going to be good for nothing, the most I said. Reading on. It is neither fit for the land, nor, nor yet for the dunghill, but cast, but men cast it out. He that have ears to hear, let him hear. If you're not staying on fire and staying strong and counting the cost and considering what it takes to be in this truth and to endure, then guess what? You can't be a servant of the Most High Yahweh You cannot be a servant in this truth. All right, so go from there. To, uh, let's go to 2 Timothy 2 and 8. We're going to go to the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 8. All right, 2 Timothy 2 and 8. Selakia. All right, because we got to endure, Israel. You got to keep that fire. Satan going to come. Satan going to come and try to Try to make you make excuses. Satan going to mess with whatever congregation. He going to mess with the congregation. He going to mess with your household. He going to mess with your job. He going to mess anything to get you off. But you got to say, no, I'm staying strong in Yahweh and Yahweh shy and strong in his faith and his truth. All right. Um, so 2 Timothy 2 and 8. Um, matter of fact. Mm. We're going to start at 1, all right? 2 Timoth Timothy's 2 and 1. Ariyah in the building, H-O-I Midwest. Kwame Ashala. All right, 2 Timothy's 2 and 1, then I'm going to jump down. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Yahweh Shai, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men. Who also may be able to teach others also. You got to keep that fire in this truth, Israel. Y'all know the old saying, the old cliche, each one teach one. You got to keep that fire. Because if you lose that fire and diligence, the Lord can't use you. All right, so y'all got to stay on point. I know it's hard. Some are stronger than others. Everybody don't have certain endurance level. But when you see you kind of weak, lean on your stronger brothers and sisters. All right. It's, it's just like it's common sense. But a lot of times people don't practice common sense. Common sense is not always common. All right. Verse um, three. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Yahweh Shai. You got to endure hardness, Israel. You can't be complaining and, and making excuses and weak. It. No, most I'm not trying to hear that. Let's link that up. Uh, everybody go to um, let's go to Syrac seven. Let's go to Ecclesiasticus 7 and 15. The scriptures say in 2 Timothy 2 and 3, 
endure hardness as a good soldier of Yahweh Shai. So you got to sacrifice and be strong, Israel. And you sisters, a, a, a soldierette. All right? If you hear the word, I just made it up. A female soldier. You had Judith, you had other sisters, you had a, a, a Esther, you had other sisters in the scriptures, strong sisters. You had a, a, the seven brothers and a second Maccabee's mother. I believe her name was Judith also. The scholars tell you her name was Judith also. Right? So you got to endure hardness, Israel. The afflictions, the trials going to come. You got to break through all of that a lot of times and keep this fire. Keep your diligence. Keep your consistency. That's another lesson I'm going to do on consistency. Repetition. Constantly. You, you know, it might get redundant. Oh, man. Camp again. I go out there and yell scriptures and... People don't want to hear dudes want to fight me. They don't want to let, yeah, week in, week out, day in, day, day out. Rising early in the morning, like it tell you, or late at night, hell, like it tell you in Isaiah. All right? Right, it tell you in Isaiah, um, my, um, the Lord said, I have set watchmen that will never hold their peace day or night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. Keep that fire. We got we to gotta be uh, 10 times more busy than Satan. Satan and his minions ain't taking no breaks. Right? What did, what did it tell you in Job, the second chapter? I tell y'all, man, this could be a five-hour lesson. What did it tell you in Job 2? It tell you, listen, Satan, the Lord said, from whence comest thou? From walking to and fro and going up and down on earth. What did it tell you in 1 Peter 5 and 8? Be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walking for about seeking whom he may devour. He ain't taking no breaks. No rest for the wicked. It tell you in, in Proverbs, the wicked, the wicked, they don't rest unless they do some evil. So they, they stay on, the devil stay on fire, no pun intended. Right? The, the devil stays on fire, no pun intended. All right? Because y'all think he down. Y'all think the devil is down in hell. Uh, burning. Shalom, Uncle Penuel in the building. Kwame Shalom. All right. Um, Brother Abner in the building. Shalom. So, yeah. It says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Hamashiach Yahawashad. Link that up with, um, let's go to Ecclesiastes 7 and 15. Sirach chapter 7 and 15. And it reads, Hate not laborious work, neither husbandry, which the most high power hath ordained. All right. And laborious work in husbandry. Because, uh, uh, you know, Israel, we're an agricultural nation. But like you sow seeds out there in the garden for them to grow spiritually. The laborious work in the husbandry is going out there teaching this gospel and planting the seeds of righteousness in the minds of the people, especially the elect. And all the nation, the 144,000 and the one third. And yes, uh, uh, um, HOI, Priest Sabak, we do understand and teach that there's 144,000 and one third, which makes up the governing body and the common people of the men, women, and children of Israel. If a brother in the camp happen to have a slip of the tongue, or a mother brother need to step on, on his studies, a little bit more or whatever, or the brother got confused, whatever the case may be. But don't say, oh, H.O., I don't understand that it's 144,000 and a one-third. Are you out of your damn mind? I got about 10,000 damn videos where I'm mentioning the 144,000 and one-third. If a brother in H.O.I., and I'm going to get on H.O.I., if a brother falls short and don't bring it out right, or he misspeaks, or he forgets, or whatever the case may be, that's on him. If, if somebody, if, if uh, we got a camp in damn Kansas City, <laughs> not to get on anybody in Kansas City or any, if we got a, a camp in Des Moines, Iowa, and we're teaching the commandments, you know, we, we read Leviticus 11 and 7 all the time in the camp. And a brother in Des Moines, Iowa say, nah, brother, you know, um, you know, you can eat pork sometime. We go, what the hell is wrong with you, brother? That's not what we teach. That's you. Going off, not studying, going off on your own understanding. So HRI is well aware of the 144,000 and the one third. 
brothers slip up in the scriptures, we correct them and we keep it moving. Don't put that on us because sometimes we're not responsible for everything a person does. When we find out about it, we correct it. We get the body in order. We're not telling a brother, you can just go out there and teach that. No. We're not telling the sister, oh, just go out there with your, with your titties out, sis. Salakia. I'm Salakia, y'all. If a sister doing that, we're going to say, no, sis. That's, we teach modest apparel. You got to put on proper clothing. All right? So... The Lord said, um, hate not laborious work. You got to keep that same fire and diligence. All right. If you was if you tried to make it to every feast day in the beginning, stay like that. After five years, uh, 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 a year, nine months, two years, five years, ten years, keep that same fire. Yo, I'm going to still try to make it to every feast day. And if I, I can, I'm damn sure going to keep it at home. And I'm going to be fellowshipping with the congregation online. For if I got whatever major reason, I just couldn't make it. All right. Second Timothy 2 and 4. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. That, me hate, that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. All right. Yahweh Shah cho, cho, like you, chose you to be a soldier in the army. So you, you, you can't entangle yourself with the affairs of this life, meaning what? You can't get too caught up in the things of this world and not make the time and balance out the time to make for the Most High Yahweh Shah and this work and your nation. Keep that fire, Israel. All right. And if a man also strive for the masteries, yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully. Don't you want your, your crown? You want your crown, um, Israel. Especially you men, you want to be the next kings and rulers and priests and prophets and princes of this earth. So we can have our women and children and the rest of our brothers in order. Our nation in order. All right. Verse six. The husband men, we just read. This can link up with um, Sirach 7 and 15 about husbandry. It said the husband men that labor with, laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits. We have a, we have a, a, Feast they call first fruits. When you go out there and plant your crops and do your husbandry and your agriculture, you would like to reap those first fruits. And what happened when you reap the first fruits, the first seven weeks of the uh, ripe fruits, you bring a portion before the priest, they burned it, and then the most high blessed the rest of your crop season. Likewise, when we go out and teach this truth, Yahweh Shah said what? If you bear much fruit, then ye are my disciples indeed. So what happens? You go out. And you bring in fruit and you first partakers of that spiritual fruit. Now the people are the fruit. So now what? You got new brothers and sisters coming in. You breaking bread with them. You teaching them. You watching them come up in the spirit. You watching them grow. Because what? You're a first partaker of that spiritual fruit. Just like that fruit that grows and, and the most I give us of the first fruits. You partaker of that fruit. Them brothers and sisters that you bring in the knowledge from going out there doing your husbandry work. You're, you're planting the seeds and the crops are growing and the fruit is coming in. This is, this is not hard to understand, Israel. But if you don't till the ground, you don't plant no seeds, you don't do nothing, your, what, what crop's going to grow? See that if you don't put in no work on that farm, or you don't put in no work in that garden or whatever, what's going to happen? Nothing's going to grow. All right, so read on. It says, um, consider what I say. And the Lord, Yahweh, by Shema Mashiach, Yahweh Shai, give thee understanding in all things. Remember, uh, verse 8, 2 Timothy 2 and 8. Remember that Yahweh Shai of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. So Paul is letting you know what? Yahweh Shai was of the seed of David that cuts immaculate conception or the virgin or miracle birth. Because it said right here, Yahweh Shai was born of the seed of David. A man's seed cannot pass but by sperm, by sexual intercourse into the woman, and it, it um, develops the egg, it connects with the egg, and it develops into a fetus, which becomes a, a, a child, a baby, and, you know, it comes out the womb and it's a living human being. That's the process of a, of a child, a person being born in the earth. So Yahweh Shai was not of a virgin miracle birth, he was born of the seed of David. Because uh, Joseph's line and Mary's line came through David. They were both Judites um, from different lineages of David. 
All right, so this cuts that immaculate conception, 2 Timothy 2 and 8. All right, verse 9. Wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the word of Yahweh is not bound. See that? That's heavy what Paul said right there. Even us today, we're going to suffer um, we're going to suffer trouble as an evildoer. People think we evil as hell for coming out there teaching the truth. Saturday night, we almost had to deal with one of our own brothers. Because he said, you you guys is wicked. That, that evil. And you know what? The brother was scoffing all night. And you know when you know when we finally almost had to lay hands on him? When he was taken up for the damn white man. What, what almost caused the fight when I rebuked the, the, the Edomite and sent them, called them a cave Neanderthal man? And, and that's when a brother said, I wish y'all, I wish y'all come at me like that and start stepping on our sign. And, and it almost went there. But we just backed them down, love tapped them, back up, you know what I'm saying? Gave him a little smack because he was acting like a little girl and kept it pushing. Not to boast or brag about violence in the camp. Because nobody gets simple. Because they're making videos about another incident we had in Georgia. But we got to defend ourselves when we out there. All right. But anyway, um, we suffer as evildoers. We, we teaching the word of God. And because of our delivery, and we don't look like the normal pastor in a suit and tie, the people don't like what we bringing out. All right. So um, reading on, it says, even unto bonds, but the word of Yahweh is not bound. Meaning Paul said, look, they locking me up. They I'm I'm um I'm being persecuted, right? I'm suffering as an evildoer, even unto bonds. They're locking me up and persecuting me for teaching this um truth. But he said the word of Yahweh is not bound. Because what? No matter what we go, that's why you gotta keep this fire, Israel. Because no matter what we go through, it's not gonna stop the word of the Lord. So when you catching hell for this truth and going through everything that you're going through, don't get discouraged because guess what? No matter what they do, Paul is telling you right here, no matter what happens to you is not stopping the word of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. So that's how you keep this fire and you keep that fire in this truth. He said, <clears throat> I'm suffering as an evildoer even unto bonds, <clears throat> but the word of the Lord is not bound. Guess what? They can lock me up for teaching this gospel. But guess what? Everything I brought out was the truth. The word of the Lord still went out. And it still got to whoever it was supposed to get to. Even though you don't lock me up for this truth. See that? So stay on fire for this work, Israel. Keep that same diligence. Read on. Um, verse 10. Therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sake. Check that out. Paul said, everything I'm going through is for the elect's sake. The first wave of the elect is 144,000, a governing body. The second wave of the elect is the general population of Israel, the men, women, and children. That's the one third, right? That's the um, innumerable multitude that John saw in Revelations. And yes, H-O-I, we overstand that. I've been, I've been, I done learned that when I first came into the truth in 1993, uh, 94. I understood about the 144,000 or one third, and we've taught that to all the brothers, and the body of HRI knows that. If a brother slip up, then a brother got to catch himself. He got to check himself and get, get on point, right? But the body of HRI, all the young te uh, uh, teachers coming up in HRI, they understand the 144,000 and the one third. We brothers been learned that, but we got a, a weak link in the chain. We strengthen that link. All right. It says, therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sakes that they may also obtain the salvation, which is in your house shy with eternal glory. So guess what? You got to stay on fire so that you can go out there and get the rest of the elect. That's selfish. When you don't keep that fire, you fall by the wayside. You're not doing the work no more. Now what? Your your one less brother or sister that can be used by the Most High to bring the rest of Israel in. So Paul said, I endure all things for the elect's sake. Everything we go through, we can't be selfish. We got to say, this is for our people and our nation. What if we go out there and teach one Sabbath and, damn it, we, we, we bring it back Isaiah in a regeneration. We don't know who's who. We don't know who's who. So we endure all things for the elect's sake, all right? 
So when you stay on fire for this truth, you're thinking about yourself. You're thinking about Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, yourself, and your entire nation. By Shema Mashiach, Yahweh Shai. All right, so that's it on that. That was 2 Timothy 2 and um, 8 through 10, but I started at 1. Let's go to uh, 2 Peter's 1 and 10 now. 2 Peter's 1 and 10. Stay on fire for this truth sake, Israel. Stay on fire. You don't stay on fire, what's going to happen? The most are going to remove your candlestick and you're going to fall by the wayside and you're going to get somebody else to do your job. All right, so stay strong. We know we all going through it. Sometimes, um, like Paul said, Satan hinders us. Um, you know, uh, 2 Corinthians 2 and 11, we are not ignorant of Satan's devices. Damn, I was on my way to camp. I can my damn car start acting up. Satan, Satan jacked me up, man. I was, I was on my way, brothers. You know what I'm saying? Whatever might happen. Brother, I, I, yo, I was on, I was on my way. Shalom, sis. All right, I was on my way to the a feast day, and my damn job called me in. And they said, come in or you're fired. Damn, we know things can happen in this kingdom. Don't get us wrong. All right, you get worn out, man. It's, this kingdom wears you out, these jobs and your day-to-day -day life. And I know, man, brothers brothers have told me. Man, sometimes I get home and all I feel like doing is going to sleep, elder. Damn, I'm, ex I'm exhausted. But you got to stay strong, all right? Um... Second Peter's 1 and 10. It said, wherefore the rather brethren give diligence. What is diligence? A earnest and sincere effort. And that's how you stay on fire. You stay on fire by continually giving an earnest and sincere effort. A lot of times, man, the Sabbath come, I'm drained out from the damn week. But the Shabbat come, no. Let me get up, let me study, let me hit... Uh, uh, the Sabbath classes and services And let me get ready to go out and get this word out Yeah man You know what I'm saying them, them, You know the, the week you've been drained all week Or especially you know On Friday comes so called Friday And you're trying to do everything before the sun go down You're running around You know you're running around taking care of bit, Trying to rush everything in before the um, sun go down The Shabbat You get worn out Damn it's been a long week Nope but here come the Sabbath Even though it's the day of rest but we still required to serve the Most High on that day. All right. So reading on, it says, um, Wherefore, the rather brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, ye shall never fall. It said, give diligence, give an earnest and sincere effort to make your calling and election sure. The Most High didn't have to choose you. St. Saint John 15, 16. Yahweh Shah said, you have not chosen me, I chose you. So let's get it together, Israel. Let's get it together and let's do what we got to do for this work. All right, let's go to Isaiah 30 and 20. All right, I got just got a few precepts for y'all. Nothing too long and then we're going to get the new moon scriptures and close it on out. All right, Isaiah 30 and 20. All right, Isaiah the 30th chapter and the 20th verse. I may be moving a little fast, but... um. You know, y'all can go back over this video. It'll be live on here and it'll be on a, a couple of our YouTube channels. You know, H-O-I-L-A, probably Hopeful Elect, whatever, whoever, whatever brothers want to repost it on the YouTube channels. And, and go back and get these notes, man. All right. So um, Isaiah 30 and 20, and it reads, And though the Lord Yahweh give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, meaning what? We in captivity with suffering. And also the... Um, the bread and the water of adversity and affliction is the false doctrines that we are being forced to, you know, that's being put on us in this, in this kingdom. Because <clears throat> the bread and the water also represents the wisdom uh, pursuant to Isaiah 55 and Sirach the 15th chapter. All right, I can read those on their own. The bread and the water is also symbolic to the wisdom. So although we're being taught lies, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore. Guess what? The Lord said, your teachers, your prophets, my prophets, my servants, my team, whatever you want to call it. If you humble, I ain't no prophet. Don't call me a prophet. All right. I don't don't, don't give me no title, brother. No, don't, don't give me no flattering title. OK, a servant. That's still a title, but uh, it perhaps is a more humble title. No, don't call me a prophet. Don't call me an apostle. Don't call me no disciple. No, brother, I'm just a, a humble servant, a prophet. All right. Hopeful elect. How about that? Okay, hopeful elect. 
All right, the, the, the more humble the title, the better. Okay, keep you grounded. But whatever the case may be, the Lord said, thy teacher, at least we can use teachers, because that's in the scriptures. All right, he said, thy teachers shall not, so like a yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore, but thine eyes shall see thy teachers. So if we all slacking and not keeping that fire and not stepping up and doing what we're supposed to do, and like I said in the opening of my class, this, let me put my disclaimer. This is not an attack on any brother or sister personally in the nation. This is just things that I see and develop in. And this is encouragement for HOI and the whole nation. So don't get simple and emotional and act like anybody's talking about you per se. If the spirit is cutting you, then that's a different. We can't do nothing about that because that's a Bible cut, cutting into your spirit. But this is encouragement for Israel. Self-improvement. All right. It says, uh, and thine ears shall hear a word behind thee saying. Uh, so like I was saying, if you losing that fire and not being diligent, how do people going to see the teachers? Didn't Paul just say, I endure all things for the elect's sake? So if the most I say through Isaiah, your eyes are going to see your teachers. How if we are slacking and not keeping that fire and diligence, how do people going to see the teachers out there? They got to see us there. Right? The, um, um, some of you are gainsaying Israelites against the camp. You say, oh, y'all just out there to be seen on them corners. You damn right. The Lord just said we're going to be seen. He said, your eyes shall see your teachers. Y'all just out there to be seen. And guess what? Even with that, even with um, the brothers that's just out there to be seen, because you got that going on in Israel. You know, I, I got that saying, brothers all brothers get a uh, uh, brothers get a, a unity shirt. They get four or five brothers. They all get the same shirt. They get a camera and a YouTube channel, and they got their new camp so they can get their views up. All right, but guess what? Paul said, whether in pretense for a show or sincerity, Yahweh Shah is preached. So it's all good. All right? Read on. It says, um, and thine ears shall hear a word behind thee saying, this is the way. Walk ye in it. And the people, they're going to hear that fire in you. Right? <laughs> yeah, the lightning shirts. <laughs> you got jokes, Joshua. <laughs> Shout out to any cast that got lightning shirts. No, that's not a jab at nobody. That's an inside joke with HOI. Yeah, that's what they get. They get four or five brothers. Not even seven brothers. Completion. They all get the same shirt. They get a YouTube channel. And now they got a, they get a camera. And now they got their new camp. If I seen it once, I seen it a million times in Israel. You got brothers that come in and say, yo, we don't want to be under y'all dudes. We're going to start our own camp. Or, or what happens a lot in Israel nowadays, and HOI, we witnessed this, this a lot. Brothers will come in the camp, get what they need. They will use the camp to get what they need to get them to a certain level, and then they'll break off and do their own thing. And most of the time, Evil and wicked and scheming as hell, they'll get in other brother's ear and take them off to start their new camp also. If I've seen it once, I've seen it a million times. Wicked and evil as hell. Right? You can't go out there and just do something on your own. You got to come in. Like the scriptures say, uh, certain men crept in unawares. You think they're brothers. They act all shy and innocent, but they're damn raving and wolves inside. But that's all right, because every dog has its day. Right? Um... Read on, it says, uh, walk ye in it when you turn to the right hand or when you turn to the left. And when you wake up to this truth, you got to say, wait a minute, these brothers got the truth. I'm not turning away from this to the right hand or to the left. This is it right here. This is where the fire is at. And I want to get that same fire and keep that same fire. So if you lose the fire, how are people going to see the teachers? Right? Did, didn't the scripture say, how should they hear without a teacher? All right, so they got to see you there. So that was Isaiah 30 and 20. Now let's go from there to, um, let's go to, uh, let's get Ecclesiasticus. Let's go to Sirach. Sirach 37 and 10. All right, Sirach 37 and 10. All right, and it says, uh, this is a good, a good chapter on counseling. You know, beware of who you counsel with and, you know, where you get your counseling from. 
All right, Sirach 37 and 10. It says, consult not with one that's expect of thee, and hide thy counsel from such as envy thee. All right, you cannot... That's right, Sister Khan, every dog has his day. Um, uh, Salakia, the Lord said, you can't counsel with those that envy you. Meaning, you can't talk to everybody about sincere things that you're going through, or private things, or personal things. If a person envy you, and you go to them for counsel, what's going to happen? They're going to give you the wrong counsel because they want to see they want to see some bad. They want to see something happen to you or they're going to sit back and say, no, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. You're doing the right thing. Knowing it's the wrong thing, knowing they should be telling you to do something else. But they want to see you fall because they envy you. All right. And get you got to stay on fire in this truth as far as being circumspect, being aware. You got to know how to spot different brothers and sisters because men, men going to creep in unawares. Raven and wolves going to come in amongst the flock. But right? that's just part of the territory. John said, uh, where I dwell, where Satan's seed is also. Right? I'm roughly paraphrasing. But, you know, so you got you to gotta, you gotta stay on fire and stay vigilant and stay aware and circumspect. Because, like Chuck D told you, every brother ain't a brother. Not all Israel is Israel. You got some demons in these ranks. Fringes on and everything. Yeah, I said it. Oh, no, that's going to scare y'all now. Y'all really going to lose the fire. Now. What? You got wicked people in the truth? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. So, B, you got to be aware. You got to keep the fire to keep up under yourself, to be aware. And a lot of times, when you're not keeping the fire and staying in this work, you start slipping because you're not around the spirit all the time. When you're around the spirit all the time, other brothers is correcting you. Sisters is correcting you. You're reading your scriptures, you're studying, you're coming to the classes, you're being constantly edified. You're going back over things that you might have forgot or, or got a little slack on. Oh, I got hit with that script today, I needed that. So you got to stay on fire in this truth, Israel. All right, the most I didn't come bring you in here to waste his time. And you can't waste his time because all he's going to do is remove you and, and, and the ball going to keep rolling. The train going to keep rolling to the kingdom, till the train reaches the kingdom. With or without you. But keep that fire and keep that engine going so we all can reach this kingdom. I don't know. <laughs> I know that might be a little corny, Israel, but whatever. All right, no folly. So um, let's go to Syrac. Yeah, I was in Syrac. Syrac 37 and 11 now. Neither consult with a woman touching her of whom she is jealous. See, St uh, keeping a fire means staying on point too. You got to watch out for people that's envious and jealous of you. All right. It says, um, neither with a coward in matters of war. You brothers, man, you can't have a scary spirit when you go out there. The, in the laws of war in Deuteronomy 20, the most I said, if you scared, stay home, man. You can't be a coward, man. You can't have the fire of the most high and be, and be a coward. I remember we was, um, a sister in the congregation passed. May she rest in peace. And we was at the funeral and, you know, some of the family was Christian. So they had a pastor there and they had us there, Israel, to represent, you know, for, for uh, the truth side. So, you know, we still did the funeral because we didn't want to clash with the family, whatever. So even the pastor said, the pastor said, listen, man, you can't be a man of God and be a coward. Even a Christian pastor said that. He said, you cannot be a man of God and be a coward. So a lot of y'all, the, the way y'all lose the fire, y'all lose the fire through fear. Because fear starts to come on you. Oh, damn. The camps can be kind of hectic. We be almost getting in fights out there, but that's part of counting the cost. Isn't that the scripture I opened up with? Luke 14, 25 to 35. He said, what king don't count the cost when he go to war? You got you to say, look, man, when we go out there and teach, man, we might have to be ready to throw down. We might have to be ready to put our life on the line. We might, you know, the scriptures say in Revelation 2 and 10, be faithful unto death and the Lord shall give you a crown of life. So you got to be ready for a little bit of everything. Otherwise, you can't be used by the Most High. All right. It says, um, nor with a merchant concerning exchange, nor with a buyer of selling, nor with an envious man of thankfulness, 
Nor with an unmerciful man touching kindness. All this is self-explanatory. Nor with the slothful for any work. And you can't get lazy, Israel. Slothfulness means laziness. That's how a lot of y'all lose your fire too. You get lazy. You get slothful. And the Lord said what? You cannot consult with a lazy person for getting work done. And what's going to happen after a while? All that brother, you can't rely on him. That sister, even the sister, they're going to be like, man, we supposed to get together and the sister was supposed to do this. And that sister always coming with an excuse. You know what? Don't even involve her no more. Get, you know, get the, get the sisters that's, that's, that's diligent. And that's what's going to happen. They, they, you're not going to be able to consult with a slothful person for getting work done. So a lot of y'all, you lose your fire by what? By getting lazy and slothful and making excuses. We can't do that, Israel. And this is for all of Israel. Not one, two, three brothers and sisters in particular. This is for the whole nation. This is for me. When them slothful demons try to attack me, hell no. Get up off of me, man. Let's get out here and get this work done. All right, so reading on. Um... Nor with a hireling for a year of finishing work. A lot of y'all, eh, you, go, you go a good two, three months and then, eh. nah, that's a hireling. That's a temporary, that's a day laborer. Like Issachar, Issachar go to Home Depot and Lowe's and they sit out in the parking lot hoping a white man to hire them for a day of construction work. They don't have no, no union. They don't have no, they haven't been hired on a permanent construction, construction site. They're a day laborer. They're per diem, per day. The most I wants longevity. Matthew 24, 13. He that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. He that keepeth the fire and the zeal and the diligence unto the end shall be saved. You cannot be lazy and slothful and temporary when you're serving the most high. You got to be diligent. You, you miss here and there. That did happen. Something happens. Or, or you doing some other work? You know, I've, I've had Sabbaths where I was working on flyers, working on technical things, working on stuff for the camp. Hey, y'all younger brothers, y'all go out there and hold it down. I'm, let me finish this. But what? It's still other work done getting for the camp in the nation. But I'm right back out there the next week. I'm right back out there the week after that. Right back out there the week after that. All right, not to toot my own horn, but I know the importance of keeping the fire, staying in the face, staying diligent. All right, reading on, it says, um, nor with an idle servant of much business. You can't get nothing done with this guy. This guy is idle. We got, we got uh, camps, feast days, uh, 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 pull-ups, traveling. We trying to get garments made. We trying to get this new YouTube channel started so we can edify the people. We trying to get, build up money so we can make different moves. And this brother, this sister just, ah, they, I, we, can't, we can't get no business done with them. They don't have no fire in them no more. They don't want to work and labor for this truth no more. All right. Um, Hearken not unto these in any manner of counsel, but be continually with the godly man whom thou knowest to keep the commandments of Yahweh, whose mind is according to thy mind and will sorrow with thee if thou shalt miscarry. See that? Sirach said, that's the type of brothers and sisters you want to be around. Godly men. Righteous men and women. And when you're a godly or righteous man or woman, brother and sister, you're going to keep the fire, you're going to keep the faith, and you're going to be in this thing for the long haul. In Yahweh by Shema Mashiach, Yahweh All right, let's go from there to Psalm. Let's go to Psalm 34 and 19. So for all of y'all, all of y'all that complain, you're going through afflictions. You, you're catching hell. All right, you're going through this, you're going through that. Guess what? You got to break through that too. All right. Um, Psalms 34 um, and 17, I believe it is. Okay, Psalms 34 and 17. It said, The righteous cry, and Yahweh heareth, and delivereth them out of all their troubles. So, a lot of y'all that use affliction and persecution as an excuse, the Lord said He delivers you from all that. A lot of times you be, get, you be catching hell because you're not coming around and doing what you're supposed to be doing. Because you're slacking. Let, let's face it. You're losing that fire. So now that fire of judgment starts to come visit you. This is all real, Israel. 
All right, verse 18. Yahweh is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and save of such as be of a contrite spirit, meaning a broken or humble or repentant spirit. So that's another way you keep your fire, by being lowly and repentant and meek, and always asking the Most High for forgiveness. That's how you keep that fire too, praying, fasting, meditating, staying in these scriptures. That's how the fuck, that's how the, a lot of times the most I give you the spirit to keep diligent and keep your fire going. All right. Verse um, 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. So listen, brothers and sisters, you can't say, oh, I'm going through this. I'm going through that. I'm dead. No, many are the afflictions of the righteous. You're going to catch hell for this truth's sake. All right. But Yahweh delivereth him out of them all. And you know, one of, the, one of the best ways to keep that fire, you got to read these scriptures because the scriptures going to tell you what to do to keep the fire. It's common sense. A lot of y'all don't be studying. You don't be studying. A lot of y'all don't be coming home, reading your word, dedicating at least an hour, two hours, whatever. Even if you have a long day, even a half an hour, I got to read my Bible 15, 20, 30 minutes uh, uh, at least for the day. At least let me stop everything. At least give, give an hour to the Most High's word. Even if I got to sneak in 15, 20 minutes. Okay, I got two chapters in. I got a chapter and a half. I got seven, eight precepts in. I got something in today. And some days when your schedule calls for it, you do a little more. All right? You do a little more. Yo, I got, got a free time. You know, it's a Sunday. I ain't really doing nothing. I'm going to hit my scripts for two, three, four hours. Five, six, seven, whatever. I'm going to study all day. I'm going to just get up, eat, shower, do what I need to do, and I'm going back to studying. Make sure that how long is the house so good, everything good, I'm going back to study. All right, so the Lord said we all go through affliction. So you can't, you know, you can't say, well, I'm catching so much hell. Hell is part of the fire. That, that fire of hell should keep you on fire. That fire of affliction and persecution, that should keep your fire going. In righteousness, all right? So let's go from there. I'm going to land this plane soon, Israel. Salakia. Um, let me see what I want. What else I want? Let's go from there to the Apocrypha. Let's go to 1 Maccabees 3. <clears throat> That's right, sis. That's right. Acknowledgement. All right? Hey, acknowledgement is part of keeping the fire. Acknowledgement. You know what I'm saying? And then um, then we got this. we got this social media. A lot of times, brothers and sisters, you got to put that social media down. Because let's be honest, a lot of times when you're on social media, you're not really studying like you should. You're listening, but are you putting your face in a book? Okay, taking notes, looking up words. Okay, that's scripture. What that's, what's the precept to that? You got you to do that also as a balance. Now, you could be online all day if you're taking notes, you're learning. All the brothers and sisters, brothers bringing out some heavy stuff, but... You got to balance it out. You got to sit down and do your own reading and meditating between you and the Most High and Yahweh Shah also. Right? Yahweh Shah said, Revelation 1 and 3, blessed is he that readeth. Y'all remember this, the class I did on uh, reading is fundamental? All right? So blessed is he or she that readeth also. All right? So let's get it together. So let's go from there to 1 Maccabees 3, 18. Let me show you what our forefathers said. They They... Man, if you want to see an example of keeping a fire, just read. Man, I could read the, the Maccabee story 10 times over and then read it the 11th time and still glean something from it. All right, that's the, that's the beauty of, of, of uh, this story, man. You know, um, first Maccabees 3, and we're going to start at 18, one of my favorites. All right, check out how our ancestors were for this truth. And stay in the fire they kept. First Maccabees 3.18. Unto whom Judas answered. It is no hard matter for many. To be shut up in the hands of few. That's what he was reading earlier. In, in Luke 14. You know a king consider. Can I defeat. This army. And I only got 10,000. But they got 20,000. If you put your trust in the most high. And he's with you. The answer is yes you can. Not to sound like Barack Obama. Yes, we can. <laughs> all right. And with the power of heaven, it is all one to deliver with a great multitude or a small company. Right. So 
If you putting that faith in Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, you keeping that fire, he going to deliver you. He going to deliver you from all them demons that's, that's uh, coming against you. All right, so reading on, it says, um, For the victory of battle standeth not in the multitude of an host, but strength cometh from heaven. So, come on, Israel, you knowing that, getting the encouragement of our forefather Judas Maccabees, you can't understand that? You can't understand that the strength comes from heaven. That should encourage you to keep the fire just with that alone. Strength comes from heaven, from Yahweh Bashem, Mashiach, Yahushai, and the angels. That should be enough encouragement to keep you, keep you, keep that fire in you at all times. Now, like I said, and like I said earlier, listen, we all go through stuff, Israel. Sometimes you got an emergency, you got the job. You got a heavy workload. You got a family issue, whatever. But a lot of times, even with that, you got to try to break through that stuff and still make time. Notice I said time. If you got to go to work, you don't, you don't just say, well, I ain't going to work because I'm going to camp. No. Right? Balance it out. If your child is sick, you don't say, well, I'm, I'm going to just go to the feast day. My child is sick. No, you tend to your child and try to make sure they well. And you say, well, brothers, listen, man, I'm going to make sure, you know, me and my wife, we're going to stay home. The baby's sick. We don't want to come to the feast day without the baby. And, you know, we don't want to bring the baby out sick. So, you know, we're going, that's understandable. And if the baby's, well, don't be lying on your children, Israel. All right, do not be lying and using your children as excuses. You know, your child cough because maybe they swallow something, a little something. Oh, you know. My child has the flu. Uh, we can't come out. And they probably cough because maybe the water went down a little wrong or something. They fine. Three, four coughs, they fine. Oh, no. And see, my, my son was coughing earlier, and I don't want it to turn into nothing. <coughs> yeah, brother. <coughs> my son is sick, brother. Oh. <coughs> yeah, brother. I'm sick, brother. Knowing damn well your ass going to be up watching some folly Later on that night. But, uh, <coughs> yeah, but, uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, three drops of rain. <coughs> three drops of rain got on me the other day when it was drizzling. And, um, <coughs> yeah, my doctor said I need to stay in. Come on, stop it, man. <laughs> it's really, I'll be BS. Hey, you think the most I don't see? Yeah, brother, well, <coughs> four drops of rain got on me the other day when it was drizzling. Oh, man, I got such a serious head cold now. I can't make it, brother. <coughs> man, I'll see y'all brothers next week. <coughs> Come on, man. The, the most I don't like lying excuses, man. Right? <laughs> Hold that. Let's go to, um, the most I don't like that, man. Let's go to Proverbs 26 and 13 real quick. Hold, um, we're going to hold Psalm. We're going to go back to Psalms. No, we was in um, Salaki. We was in uh, Maccabees, my bad. I got three or four scriptures open. Most I don't like that, that lion, man, and, and making f uh, fake excuses. Proverbs 26 and uh, 13. It says, the, the slothful man saith, there is a lion in the way. A lion is in the streets. Meaning, in other words, Solomon is saying, a lazy person will come up, will make up any kind of damn excuse just not to do the work of the Lord. Right? They're they going to say, listen, man, I was on my way to the new moon, but when I got in an Uber, Uber driver turned the corner, a big lion was in the middle of the street, brother. And that lion looked like he'll, he'll tear up the Uber car, tear up the Uber driver, and break through the window and eat me too. All right, see that? Right? There was a what? Sweet like sweet oil? Okay. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So basically what Solomon is saying, a lazy person will come up with the wildest damn excuse not to get no work done. Right? Yeah, they will come up with the wildest excuse. Proverbs 26 and 13 again. The slothful man saith, there is a lion in the way. A lion is in the streets. Right, yo, I, I couldn't, I couldn't drive my car down the street because it was a big lion in the middle of my street. So, man, I, I can't come to the feast day. All right, Solomon is uh, having a little sarcasm and sense of humor here. As, as the door turns, verse fourteen, 
as the door turneth upon his hinges, so doeth the slothful upon his bed. You know how a door goes back and forth on the hinges? <laughs> That's how a lazy person is on their bed. Just tossing it back and forth, but they're not getting out of that bed. Back and forth, back and forth. And, and listen, Israel, there's a difference between tired and needing to get rest and plain lazy. Sometimes I got to take a day. I'll tell you in a minute. Right? I'm, I'm, I'm. <laughs> no folly, no folly. We just, you know, we just having a little fun making a word. I'm being, you know, I'm, I'm using Solomon's sense of humor. All right, it's all good, right? No folly. But um, I'm not talking about, listen, man, I, I'll take a day in a heartbeat. Especially since I got a little older, you know. I'm, 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 I'm still young, though. But sometimes your body will just shut down. Like, listen, you better get some rest because you need it. But guess what? Once you get revived, pow, right back up. Right back up. You know what I'm saying? Because your body will let you know, listen, it's time to rest. You, it's been days I tried to. And it's like, yo, Bob, because I've been going so long. Pull-ups, trips, traveling. Uh, two, three days of camp. Especially if I'm in New York. Oh, forget about it. You know what I'm saying? Bye, bye, bye. Class. Uh, 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 conference calls. Meetings. Can't just work and work and work. Uh, business. Family. Children. Right? So, so you got to take it. Take it. You know, take it some time and, and, and rest. So there's a difference between laziness and tiredness and needing to get rest. Don't think because you need to get some rest you're being lazy, Israel. Lazy is when you just don't get nothing done and you're just sitting on your behind constantly, 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 constantly back to back. All right. Um, it says, um, the slothful hide of his hand in his bosom. It grieveth him to bring it out again to his mouth. The sluggard is wiser in his own conceit than seven men that can render a reason. Right. A, a, a lazy person will come up. They'll come up with a clever damn excuse well, have you confounded? Like, damn, that was a good one. <laughs> they'll come up with a clever excuse not to get any work done. It said they'll become wiser than seven men that could render a reason. Their excuse will be so, so damn shrewd, you'll be like, oh, just forget it, brother, sister, you can't make it. All right, but no, listen, you got to break through. All right, and... um. You got you can't procrastinate. You know, procrastination is another thing. All right. That that can be because of laziness. It can it can be that you're just a person that put things off. Oh, I'll get to it, I'll get to it, I'll get to it. It don't necessarily mean you're lazy and you won't do it. Cause I, I've seen people put stuff off for a year, but but they get it done when they when they be like, all right, man, you know, I've been putting this off, but procrastination don't necessarily mean laziness, but if you procrastinate, 10 damn years will pass you by and you'd be like, damn, I ain't been to camp in 10 years. I ain't been to a feast day in 10 months. I ain't been to, I ain't been with the brothers and sisters for a year because you kept saying, oh, I'm a fellowship. I'm, I'm tired. Not this week because I'm tired from work. Not this week. It's my children. Not this week because of, and next thing you know, a damn year done went by and you having fellowship. Because every time you got a damn excuse. So watch that, Israel. Kind. All right. So um, that's it on that slothfulness. That, that's a whole nother lesson within itself. Laziness. Don't lose the fire of diligence. Don't lose the fire of being, you know, um, a person that's strong. And messaging me. Don't lose that fire of being diligent, all right, which is the uh, which is the opposite of laziness or slothfulness, all right? So um, finishing off in Maccabees, uh, 1 Maccabees 3, and um, um, 19, it says, For the victory of battle standeth not in a multitude of, of an host, but strength cometh from heaven. So there's the encouragement again, Israel. You keep your fire because you know your strength comes from heaven, from the heavenly father. All right. They come against us in much pride and iniquity to destroy us and our wives and children and to spoil us. Because back then when they was fighting the Greek armies, they said they coming against us to kill us, rob us and take our women and children. And the same thing now. 
It, it, it's just on different levels, but we are at war. So-called black, Latino, Native American, Seminole, Indian man, you are at war in this society. They want to destroy you. They want to destroy your family. They want to destroy your children. And it's the same thing. It's just on different levels. Planned Parenthood, gentrification, institutionalized racism. That's all the same thing. It's all the same thing. All right. It says, um, but we fight for our lives and our laws. That's how you keep the fire to Israel. You know, you know, you know that you're fighting for your lives and your laws. That's how you keep the fire. Listen, man, this is our life. If, if we don't stay diligent in this truth and keep this fire in this truth, this is our life we're talking about here. All right, so understand that, Israel. Let me get a couple of more, and uh, we're going we gonna to close it out. Let me get, um, uh, let's get 1 Corinthians. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15 and 57. All right, 1 Corinthians 15 and 57. All right, just a few more, Israel. You know, uh, this can be an all-night lesson. But um, you got to gotta keep the fire. Got to keep the fire, Israel. Keep that fire. You can't um, let Satan come in and get you slay, slothful, get you, get you doubtful. You know, um, none of that. And this is, this is all for encouragement, Israel. We love y'all. And we want to see everybody uh, uh, live their best life. And Yahweh and Yahweh Shai and in this truth and give forth their best effort. You know, fight the good fight of faith unto the end. Keep that fire to the end. All right, 1 Corinthians 15, 57. But thanks be to Yahweh, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. See that? That's enough right there. That's enough right there to keep the fire on you and keep you in the faith. It says, but thanks be to Yahweh, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Hamashiach Yahushai. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of Yahweh by Hashem Hamashiach Yahushai. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in Yahweh. See that? Your labor is not in vain in Yahweh by Hashem Hamashiach Yahushai. So that's enough to keep you on the fire right there. All right, 1 Corinthians 15, 57, and 58. That's enough to keep the fire on you right there. All right? Your labor is not in vain. Yeah, everybody can write down um, 1 Corinthians 15, 58 with Proverbs 14, 23. Uh, Solomon said, in all labor there is profit. So come on, Israel. You got, you got all these good precepts, and there's, there's 10,000 more I could read. Have y'all up here at 6 o'clock in the morning with this word? And you got all these good precepts, and you can't, you can't see that you got to stay in this fight. You got to keep that fire, keep that zeal, keep that diligence, keep that endurance to the end. All right? Um, go from there. Let's go from there to um, jump over to 1613. Same uh, book, 1 Corinthians 16, 13. And it reads um, such, 1 Corinthians 16, 13. Watch ye, stand fast in the faith. Quit you like men, be strong. You know what this is talking about? This goes with 2 Ezra, I think the 14th chapter, when it says, put off the weak nature. Y'all can read that on your own. Read the whole chapter and, and just wait till you get to that verse, that precept. But I think it's 2 Ezra 14, 14. But the Lord said what? Watch ye, stand fast in the faith. Quit you like men, be strong. When it say quit you like men, it means what? You're excellent class. Yeah, the water, sister. It's all, all praise. It's all through the spirit of Yahweh Bashim and Mashiach Yahweh Shai. And um, I got so much more, but I'm a, I'm, these, these are good, good handful of precepts to keep y'all going. But it says quit you like men, meaning what? Put off. The regular thoughts of mortal man that troubled him every day. Quit you like men. You got to be strong. That's why I said quit you. Quit you like men. Be strong. You got to be strong. Joshua 1, 7 through 9. Only be thou strong in your hour. So keep that fire, Israel. You got to stay strong. 
quit you like men. Put off that weak nature. Put off the regular excuses of men and be strong and get back in this fight and be diligent, be strong, shake off the slothful demons off of you um, and, and uh, be diligent for this word. And this is all just encouragement, family. That's all this is. All right. First Corinthians 16, 14. Let all your things be done with charity. I beseech you, brethren, ye know that the house of Stephanus, that it is the first fruits of Achaia, and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. Come on, Israel. When you're addicted to something, any of y'all grew up in the 80s? When that crackhead wanted that crack, they was determined to get that crack. When they, when they, when they wanted to get that crack, it's an addiction. When I, I, I remember growing up in the 70s and 80s, how many of y'all remember the alcoholics used to stand in front of the liquor stores? I don't see it as much now, you know, that the hardcore alcohol spirit amongst our people that kind of faded out. It's still alcoholics amongst us, but a lot of these celebrities and famous people, believe it or not, they be alcoholics. But remember back in them days, if you grew up in the 70s and 80s, I remember the alcoholics used to be, they used to be in front of the liquor store eight o'clock in the morning. I remember because in high school, we used to sneak out. We used to cut cut high school and go drink. And you know what we used to do? We was 15, 16, and 17. We'd go to the liquor store, right? The, the, oh, right, <laughs> no folly. <laughs> we would go to a liquor store, right? And we would go like maybe about 20, 30 feet from the liquor store. And we'll get one of the winos and we'll say, yo, 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 come here, come here. And we'd be like, yo, go in there. Uh, Cisco, we used to drink stuff like Cisco uh, MD 2020 Right And I saw MD 2020 in a damn In a damn um, Liquor store the other day I was like damn they still sell that I knew they did but you know We used to call that liquid crack MD 2020 um, um, We used to call that liquid crack Along with St. Ives the St. Ives was the beer of crack and MD 2020, MD 2020 was the wine of crack. Yeah, St. Dives, right? We used to, we used to um, call it St. Dives, not St. Ives, but St. Dives. That, that beer, man. <laughs> Ooh, I can tell you some stories in the world of me drinking that beer. We used to squeeze lemons into it because the taste was so bad. But you know what that was? A lot of that malt liquor and stuff, that was the bad dregs of the good beer. And Esau is so greedy, he didn't want to waste. Like when they made the good beers, they were, that would be the dregs of it. The uh, uh, the old, old English and um, St. Ives stuff, that would be the dregs of the, of the good beer. When they finished making the good beer, that was the dregs of the good beer. And they would bottle that up and sell that to, um, to us. I remember one time, I used to live on... Um, not to go off into a tangent, but I used to live on a borderline of Brooklyn and Queens, okay? I, I say it all the time. I rep my old hood. I grew up in East New York, Brooklyn, which is on a borderline of Queens. And a lot of times, I would step over into Queens, like uh, Howard Beach and, and different parts. Well, kind of Howard Beach. I only went out there when I had to work. Them damn Italian crackers. Um, Ozone Park. But when you go into when you go we go outside of East New York and start to go into Queens, especially the deeper you got in, in certain areas they didn't even sell those beers. You go in some stores, you didn't even see Old English and and Saint Ives. You didn't see them. You didn't see Malt Liquor. Period. They had the real beer. They had the the Miller and the Bud and the Michelob and whatever else was out. You know now they got Sam Adams and. And all that other stuff, you know what I'm saying? Uh, corona and all that stuff. Real beer. Right? But, and Shalom, Sister Wanda. Uncle Penuel, what you know about Old English? Oh, no, that's Sister Michelle. Old English. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that's what they were selling us. They were selling us the dregs of the beer. Mad Dog 2020. Uh, MD 2020. Come to find out, MD MD didn't stand for Mad Dog. 
It got that nickname because how drunk and high and crazy it got you. MD really stands for Morgan David. It's Morgan David 2020. Morgan David is a so-called kosher wine. But MD 2020, that was the dregs. That was the leftover dregs of the actual so-called kosher wine that they used to make. And they would put that in the bottles, call it MD 2020, and they would sell that to us. Oh, yeah, and that damn Cisco. Cisco was liquid crack, man. We used to call that liquor. That Cisco, man. Oh, my God. They was basically, Shalom says, they was basically selling us liquid death. But my point being, back to the original point, the alcoholics, they used to be in front of the store at 7, 8 o'clock in the morning because they were addicted to alcohol. And we'd be like, hey, yo, come on, yo, come on. Yo, go in there, get us two bottles of Cisco, two bottles of Mad Dog 2020, and get yourself something. You know what I'm saying? Back then, you had them a $10 bill, everybody getting drunk. Right? Because that's how cheap the liquor was. And it was strong as hell. Because it was the dregs. A lot of times, later on years, we found out that that was the dregs of real beer and wine. That after they made the real, the good quality beer and wine, the dregs of it, they would bottle that and sell it in the hood and put different name brands on it. All right, that's what, uh, uh, the MD didn't stand for Mad Dog. It was, uh, it was Morgan David. Morgan David, look up Morgan David. Is a, we drink it at the feast day sometime. It's a so-called kosher wine, but the dregs of the kosher wine, the Morgan David, they would put it in the bottles and, and name it MD2020, and it was the, it was the dregs of the, um, of the kosher wine. Yeah, that's what it was. So we called it Mad Dog because it used to Mad Dog us, but that's what they were selling us in the hood. All right, St. Oz, St. Oz probably was the damn bad batch the leftover dregs batch of the Budweiser and the Miller and the real beers, and then they bottle that and sell it in our neighborhoods. Saint dies. Not Saint I, Saint dies. All right, yeah. Country Club, The Incredible Hulk. Yeah, man. All right, but anyway, um, reading on. It says he have addicted themselves to the ministry, so... If you're addicted to something, you're going to have a certain fire in you to do it. A sex addict. A sex addict always wants to have sex. A nympho. All right? They, they always want to have sex. They can't, they can't, you know, they're promiscuous. So when you're addicted to something, you have a certain fire for it. <laughs> it is the truth. Right? When you're addicted to something, you have a certain fire and passion for it. Some people say I'm addicted to reading. They love to read and learn and study. That's a good thing. But right here, it says, Akaya, that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. We got to be addicted to doing this work. That's how you keep that fire in you. But if you lose the fire, the most I can't use you. You lose the fire, the most I can't use you. You lose, you lose. You lose, you can't be used. <laughs> right? But um, um, verse 16, that ye may submit yourselves unto such and to everyone that helpeth with us and laboreth. You see that? We just read about slothfulness. Paul said, listen, you got to submit yourselves to people that are, addic that are addicted to doing this work. And you got to submit yourselves to those that help and love to labor. Keep that fire. You got to keep that fire to do this work. Because if you lose that fire, Israel, you're going to fall by the wayside. The most I said in Revelation, he will remove your candlestick. And uh, the parable of the sower and seed, Matthew 13, the most I said, um, you'll fall by the wayside. All right. So, and you don't want to be, you don't want to be a reprobate. You don't want to be a, a unprofitable servant. All right. The most I said, he'll cast you in the outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Next thing you know, you might be out there eating out of the damn garbage can because you turn from this truth. That's a whole nother uh, lesson within itself. The most I, you, you lose the fire and then them spirits take over you and you wander off out there in the world. You could lose your mind. And that's not a fear tactic. I've seen it happen. I've seen brothers play with this word and they're out there crazy now. Psycho, bugged out. Don't even recognize me when they see me. 
And that's not a fear tactic, Israel. I just seen what the most I could do if you play with this truth. Keep that fire, Israel. You got to keep that fire. Right? Brother uh, uh, Ha Adam was on here earlier. I don't know if he's still on, but the brother, the brother said. He testified. He said he knew me since 2003, and I've been the same for this word. No matter what affliction I went through, accusations, uh, tribulations, sin, weaknesses, shortcomings, all kinds of hateful other Israelites coming at me. I said, I'm not losing a fire. Brothers try to discourage me, try to destroy my character, try to bring out any dirt they could find on me. But I, I, I kept my, I said, listen, only, I, I didn't get proud, but I said, only the most high can deem me unworthy. Sometimes Israel want to bring stuff out on you because they want to destroy you or they want to see you gone. Through envy and jealousy, hatred, competition or whatever, they just want to see you off the scene. Because we still suffer these curses. But keep that fire and we're going to even, we're going to break them curses too. By Shema Mashiach Yahushai. We're going to break them damn curses. So you got to stay addicted. That's how you keep the fire too. You got to stay addicted to doing this work as well. It has to become a righteous addiction. All right, let's go from there to um, a few more. Just a few more, Israel. I know I said that already. Right. The water, Brother Terry. The water, Sister Wanda. All right. Uh, oh, we got two Wandas on here. All right. Right, that's... Uh, Sister Wanda Liggins, H.O.I. Memphis. Shalom, sis. All right, hopefully I get down there to uh, Memphis and uh, meet you one day. We was down there back in May, but uh, most high willing could bring us back. But anyway, Revelation 3.14. Two, three more, we're going to wrap it up, Israel. And there's so many precepts you can get on this. All right. Um, Revelation 3.14. Let me see. Oh, damn. Been on here an hour and 40 minutes. All right, Revelation chapter 3 and verse 14. And it reads, And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of Yahweh. And this is written in red. That's Yahweh Shah speaking. Yahweh Shah said, Even me, I'm a faithful witness. All right? A faithful and true witness. Yahweh Shah kept that fire. Yahweh Shah kept that fire unto death. He was crucified, killed, assassinated, whatever you want to call it, for the nation of Israel. He kept the fire until his death. So come on. All right? Uh, we are not, we are, we are uh, uh, better than our Lord and Savior? No. Uh, we got to endure just like he did, even if it's unto death. Revelation 2 and 10. All right, it says on Revelation 3.15, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou were cold or hot. See that? Moses said, be cold or hot. Keep that fire. All right, he said, be cold or hot. But if, you, if you're not, you not going to keep the fire, go on, on out there, and I'm going to deal with you. I'm going to judge you. All right? So then because thou art lukewarm, the Moses said, listen, for you to be wishy-washy, that's worse than being cold, man. I'd rather you just be out there and be off than for you to be wishy-washy and play with this thing. You want the world? Go back to the world. It's going to catch up to you, but don't play with me. Don't have one foot in this truth and one foot out. The most I hate that. He says, so then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Now that don't mean, listen. That don't mean that you might, you might be going through some things and you may not be able to be as diligent as the next brother or sister. That's different. That's different, Israel. But you're still making an effort. You're going through some things. You're trying to get certain things in order, whatever. You know, soon as, some, cause sometimes the most I take us through things or, you know, we go through stuff and he might use you to do other works on a different level or whatever. That's not that. But if you're playing games every other week, you got an excuse. Every other day, every time you turn around, the dog ate my homework. A lion is in the middle of the street. A lion uh, stood in front of my car, stood in front of my Uber. Like we read in our Proverbs earlier. If you got the, the a lion is in the middle of the street excuse, the most I can't use you. 
He can't deal with you. All right, but we're talking about if you're legitimately going through something, that's when the mercy comes in. And brother's going to say, look, do the best you can. What can we do to help? And we, maybe we can do something to help, to help you get back out there on the zone, help you get back in the feast days, help you get back around the fellowship. All right, but that's another thing. Matthew's 541. If a brother asks you to go a mile, go twain. Be your brother's keepers. Galatians 6, bear ye one another's burdens. All right, that's how you keep the fire too, looking out for each other, always keeping each other on point, making a way for your brother or sister to break through their affliction so they can still be with the body in fellowship. All right? Um, reading on, it reads, um, Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increase, Salakia, 16 again. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. That's cold right there. Yeah, I wish I said, because you're not cold or hot, the Lord going to spit you out. And when you're not keeping the fire, you're not hot. You're not hot for this truth. The Lord going to spit you out of his mouth. So y'all got to keep the fire in this truth, Israel. Keep that fire burning. All right. And like the sister person um, posted earlier, the fire I'm talking about is the zeal. But you can also go through the fire of affliction, the furnace of affliction. But that furnace of affliction, that helps you to keep the fire zeal also. Because when you go through trials and tribulations and the most I deliver you, that increases your faith and it helps you keep going. Because what? You realize the most I is there with me no matter what I go through. I'm going to stay on fire for Yahweh and Yahweh Shai because he always got my back. Come on, Israel. This ain't hard to understand. Keep this fire going. Like I said, the fire I'm talking about is the zeal and the diligence and the endurance. But there's also the fire of affliction and trials and persecution to make you better. If it don't kill you, it makes you stronger. When you know better, you do better. So once you go through that fire of affliction, you can continue in the fire of zeal and diligence and endurance. All right, reading on. It says, um, because thou sayest, I am rich. And increase with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. A lot of y'all get comfortable with this kingdom. You got your little job, you got your little car, you got your little iPhone 14 Pro, Pro Max. All right, you got your little social media, you got your little clothes, you can go to a little bar on a weekend. As long as it's not the Sabbath, I ain't breaking the Sabbath. You can chill, so you get comfortable. A lot of you brothers, you got the wife and the children, got the little uh, Heathcliff Huxtable family at home. All right, yeah, you got the Cosby Show. Got a little job, wife got a good job, got a little nice house, apartment, condo, whatever. You're a lot of y'all, a lot of y'all brothers and sisters are just comfortable. I, if I've seen it once, I've seen it many times. But the Lord said, you don't realize you're poor and miserable and wretched and blind. You can have blessings. There's nothing wrong with that. That's a whole nother lesson. You can have money and be in the truth. You can have a nice house and be in the truth. You can drive a damn Benz, Lexus, whatever. We need to make a damn Hebrew car. All right? We need to, we need to uh, make everything for ourselves. Stop giving these devils all our money. But Deuteronomy 28 we would go to the enemy for the one of all things. That's part of the curses. But listen, you got a damn Bentley. Drive it till the damn wheels go up. Pull up the camp. Pull up the camp in your Bentley. And we all step out in style with our nice garments. But there's a balance. All right. If you pull it up the camp in the Bentley, you coming to do the work. And I don't mean pull up to show the people I'm an Israelite, but I got a Bentley. Check me out. No. You can show the people like, look. You can be in the truth and have blessings also. But it's not about that. It's not about the material item. But if you work hard and you 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 bless, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> yeah, your yeah, conscious. Everything is about balance. I don't give a damn if you got a damn Aston Martin. Drive it till the damn wheels come off. But stay in order and stay with the work of the most high. There's nothing wrong. H O I we don't we don't preach a, a a poor gospel meaning you got you can't have nothing you got to be homeless and broken and, and and you got to be like the like the, the Christ he the son of man have no place to rest his head 
See, you got to be homeless. I know. Don't you know when you're homeless, you really can't function? The most I said, the chief thing he gave to man was a house to cover shame. Right, that's right, Sister Wanda. Stay humble. The more blessings you get, the more you're supposed to stay humble. But I, if I seen it once, a lot of y'all get blessed and you get comfortable. You feel you don't need to serve the more. You, you got it now. I ain't got to. You're not hungry no more. You don't have no fire no more. You blessed. You comfortable. So you can't do that. These little material things of this world is nothing concerning what we're going to have in the kingdom. So you, 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 you comfortable with a little car? You comfortable with a little place to stay? You comfortable with some nice clothes? You comfortable because you got a, a, a $2 raise on your job? Come on, come on, Israel. All right? That's right, sis. Order, order. Stay humble, stay in order, and balance it out. But listen, be blessed. Have nice things. But yo, is the Shabbat, I'm going to do the work of the Lord. Is a feast day coming up, I'm going to make sure I beat. I'm going to cook, I'm going to do what I need to do. And I'm going to come in my nice garment that the Most High blessed me to be able to afford. It's all good. It's a balance. All right, read on. It says, I'll, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in a fire. Oh, there you go. You got to be gold tried in that fire. But how you going to go through that fire if you don't keep the fire? All right? Right? Yeah, they're comfortable here in Babylon. But the Lord said, Revelation 3.18, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in a fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. See, all this the Most High is telling us how we got to be in this truth. We got to stay strong. We can't be caught out there with the nakedness till our shame, not keeping the commandments, not spiritually covered. All right, we got to let the Most High anoint our eyes with the eye salve, meaning he's going to open our eyes to the understanding, meaning your, your, your third eye, which is your brain. He's going to anoint you with the understanding of these scriptures. He's going to anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see, that you may understand the words in this book, the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in this book. And um, it says, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. See, that's, that's the spirit. You can't make this up. These are, these are the words I was using. Fire, zeal, and it's right here in the scripture. In, this, in the scripture I'm reading. I didn't even realize that. I, I know the scripture backwards and forwards, but, you know, the spirit uh, just brought out those, that those words are in there. The fire I'm talking about is the zeal. But you're going to go through the other fire, which is the trial. So when you go through the fire of trial, gold tried in a fire... You're going to get the zeal. You're going to get the fire, which is the zeal. Stay diligent and zealous for this truth. We just read it right there in 3 and 19. He says, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Get that fire. Get that fire back in you. And do the first works, Israel. All right? Don't lose this fire. All right? And it says, uh, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. Y'all don't want to sit with Yahweh Shai? Yahweh Shai told us in, Revel in uh, Matthew 26, that he going to drink the new wine with us in the kingdom. He said in uh, Revelation 20, we're going to live and reign with him for a thousand years. So all you got to do is keep the fire now and overcome. All this, all this, what I'm speaking about is part of keeping the fire. Overcoming, being zealous, being diligent, going through the fiery trials of afflictions and enduring that. This is all keeping that fiery zeal and diligence in you. All right, it's um, um, verse uh, 22. He that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Meaning he that, uh, he that can get understanding uh, throughout the family. All praises to Yahweh Bashim and Mashiach Yahweh Shai. I'm nothing without them. This, this wisdom is all coming from him. Uh, from them, Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. I'm just a vessel being used, but the water for the uh, encouraging words. All right, I thought this class was important. Because of things I'm seeing going on in Israel as a whole.
This is not to pinpoint anybody. This is not to take no subliminal shot at nobody. This is for the whole nation. All right. Um, but uh, Yahweh Shah said, if you can get understanding, get understanding. But 19 is heavy concerning what we're talking about. It says, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. So guess what? A lot of times when you start playing with this truth and not doing what you're supposed to do, what the Lord start doing? He start messing with your life. He start jacking you up. And a lot of y'all be knowing the most how whooping your behind. Because you ain't doing what you're supposed to be doing. But so he said what? Be zealous. Get that fire back in you. Your fire's been put out. You need to reignite it and get back diligent and zealous. And put that fire back in you for this truth. Right? And it says, um, what I said on that, it said, He that have ears, let him hear. He that can get understanding, get understanding of what the Spirit is saying to the churches. What the Most High is telling us to do through these scriptures in Yahweh Shai. All right? So, um, one or two more, one or two more. I said that 10 scriptures ago. Um, Revelation 22 and 7. Revelation 22 and 7. I just put this class together on the spur of the moment through the spirit of uh, what I've been seeing in the nation and different things that's been transpiring. And I said this is needed for uh, Israel for, um, you know, encouragement, self-improvement and encouragement. And uh, let's get let's get back on point, Israel. All right. And and if you if you done if you've been staying on point, this is the. Encourage you to continue to stay on point. And for those of you that been been your fire been going out, it's been dwindling, it's about to be extinguished. You gotta reignite your fire. All right, which is your zeal, your diligence, your love, your first love. Yahweh shall also said in, in Revelation, return to your first love, which is doing this work and this truth. All right, uh Revelation 22 and 7. Yahweh shall said, Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Uh, we're going to jump down to 11. Revelation 22, 11. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. Listen, you can't worry about what somebody else is doing. Encourage them, pray for them. You can lead the horse to the water, but you can't make them drink. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. Don't let nobody, don't, don't follow nobody to make them, you following them, that's going to put your fire out. Yeah. Don't drag, stay diligent. All right. It said, um, and behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according to his work shall be. There you go. So Yahweh Shah said, listen, I come quickly and my reward is with me. I'm going to give every man and woman according to their works. What you have done or what you have not done. So if you ain't, if you let your fire go out, you ain't did nothing. Oh, you get, you get little to no reward from Yahweh Shah. But if you kept that fire burning, you kept that zeal, you kept that strength, you're going to get a great reward. Which one you want? Verse uh, 13, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. See that? But they got that saying, I'm an Alpha male. No, I'm an Alpha and Omega male. I'm the beginning and the end, like Yahweh Shai. I got these new age damn sayings. You know, 20 years ago, you, you Negroes really didn't know nothing about an Alpha male. You didn't know what the hell Alpha was. Alpha is the first letter of the Greek alphabet. All right, you know, I'm an alpha male. All right, you need Esau's worldly damn sayings or whatever to, to uh, you know, uh, I guess uh, validate. That's the word I'm looking for. Validate, validate um, your manhood or whatever. Yeah, like Jeremiah, fire caught up in my bones. Yeah, that's a, that's a whole nother part of the lesson. But we can go into actual scriptures where it talks about the fire being in you. All right. But these are 
scriptures to keep you in the faith, to encourage you. All right. The most I said in Jeremiah 5, his word is like a fire. And these people are wood. I tell you that in Jeremiah 5, 14. The most high's word is fire. So we got to keep his word in us because that keeps the fire in us. All right. So um, it's that I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates of the city. For without our dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. I, Yahawashai, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. There's another scripture that cuts immaculate conception. Yahawashai said, I'm the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. So the root and the offspring is the seed line, all right? And the spirit and the bride say, come, and let him that hear us say, come, and let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. So that's it on that. I just mainly wanted the uh, endurance part, and Yahweh Shah going, um, uh, he going to bless you according to your works, man. And you got to keep these commandments unto the end, because with for all that are without or those that break the commandments. And see a lot of y'all. When y'all lose this fire. Y'all start dabbling back out in the world. And then sin enters in. That's how sin enters in. Alright so. Um, that's it on that. What else I want. Um, second Ezra 2. Let's go to second Ezra 2. But yeah. Um, you know. keep Stay on fire for this truth Israel. All right, stay on fire for this truth. Don't lose your fire. Um, second Ezra 2, and um, we're going to start at 40. Second Ezra chapter 2 and verse 40. All right. So, um, yeah, um, that was a good point the sister brought out. Like Jeremiah said, he said fire was in his bones. All right. Um, and um, the Maccabees, what is that? Uh, let me see. Um, first Maccabees two, and let me see. Right, uh, this is. Let me. Re I'm gonna read this real quick. Since a uh, sister Wanda brought out the fire that was in um, Jeremiah's bones, I'm gonna get a precept to that. Uh, second, uh, first Maccabees two and twenty three. It says, now when he had left, uh, I'm going to start at 19 to get the understanding. All right. Second Maccabees, I mean, first Maccabees 2 and 19, Salakia. It says, then Matthias answered and spake with a loud voice. Though all the nations that are under the king's dominion obey him and fall away everyone from the religion of their fathers and give consent to his commandments. So th this is also to correct you brothers. A lot of you brothers. And sisters, from the days that we was in one West, brothers would get in the habit of saying the word religion is not in the Bible. That's not true. The word religion is in the regular um, uh, Genesis, the Revelation and in the Apocrypha. So you can't say the word religion is not in the Bible. The confusion came is we don't deal with today's organized man made forms of religion. Because religion simply means to just go back to the traditions or customs of your forefathers. So we do practice religion in that sense, meaning we practice the laws and nationhood that our forefathers did. So I'm going to read it again. It says, Then Matthias answered and spake with a loud voice, Though all the nations that are under the king's dominion obey him, meaning all these other nations sold out and wicked Israelites sold out, and fall away everyone from the religion or the traditions or customs of their fathers and give consent to his commandments. Yet will I and my sons and my brethren walk in the covenant of our fathers. We're going to keep that fire of Yahweh by Shema Mashiach, Yahweh Shai's laws, statutes, and commandments. It says, 
Yahweh forbid that we should forsake the law and the ordinances. We're going to keep the fire. We're not going to forsake the law and ordinances. We will not hearken to the king's words to go from our religion either on the right hand or the left. So you brothers are wrong when you say the word religion is not the Bible. You can't say that. A scholar will, eat, will have you for breakfast. Uh, uh, somebody with a concordance. All somebody got to do is pull up a blue letter Bible and pull up an apocryphal concordance and you, you food. They're going to say, wait a minute. Here's the word religion in, in, in uh, the blue letter Bible. Right? And it's in the apocrypha. What are you talking about? So brothers had had a habit. Of, I'm just correcting something that was going on from years ago. I think brothers kind of slowed down now. But it just don't be afraid of the word religion because it's in scripture. It just simply means to go back to the traditions of your forefathers because Matthias is saying it. So did Matthias mean the religion of Christianity or Islam or Buddhism or Catholicism? No, he meant we will not turn from the traditions, the law, statutes and commandments and cust righteous customs of our forefathers to the right hand or to the left. And um, let me see what I want. Um, uh, First Maccabees 2.22. First Maccabees 2.22, y'all can link that up with Isaiah um, 30, 20, and 21. I have this link up in my old Apocrypha. I got to mark it in my new Apocrypha. This Apocrypha is pretty new. It's not as marked up and scuffed up as my old one. It hasn't been through as many battles. It's still kind of fresh, but we're going to start tagging it up now. No folly. All right. But um, 1 Maccabees 2.22 with Isaiah 30, 20, and 21. Remember we read earlier, you shouldn't turn. You know, you're not going to turn from the most high to the right, from the teachers to the right hand on the left. You're going to keep that fire. You're going to stay focused. Right. Keep keeping, keeping that fire is staying focused and consistent also. All right. It says um, uh, 1 Maccabees 2.23. Now, when he had left speaking these words, there came one of the Jews in the sight of all to sacrifice on the altar, which was at Modin, according to the king's commandment. Here come a sellout Negro. Here come a sellout Negro after Matthias said, look, they sent an ambassador to, to Matthias Maccabees because he was the father of the Maccabean brothers. And they were strong and notable and righteous and zealous and had that fire for the most high in his laws. So the king said, let me go to a top respected man and get him to sell out. And then the rest of the people will follow him. But he said, we're not going to sacrifice swine's flesh on the altar to go against the traditions of our forefathers. So here come a sellout Jew, a barbecue spare rib, pork chop, pork spare rib negro. To come and he going to come up there and slap some damn swine's flesh on the altar. After Matthias just G checked the ambassador and said, we're not going to sacrifice the swine's flesh. Here come an old sellout Negro. Right, that's how people are, man. I don't care what this nigga said. I'm going to do it anyway. Like, uh, Sister Vicky might know about this. Like, uh. Even though this, well, it was the white man in a way, but it was our people. Down in uh, Houston, I believe it is, there's a, uh, that restaurant they got, the Turkey Leg Hut, right? So the Turkey Leg Hut was a pretty successful soul food restaurant down in Houston, Texas. So the white man got jealous of it and tried to get them shut down, tried to say they was the smoke and city ordinances or whatever, but they fought that in court and they won, right? They kept their business open. I think it's a black owned, it's black owned, it's a couple, right? It's a known restaurant in Houston, Texas, the Turkey Leg Hut, right? So they they started coming. Yeah, sister, I know you know about that. Um, People started coming to the restaurant and you know the ratchet ass women so like y'all, uh, they come in there dressed like hoochie mamas or whatever, and, and whatever the case may be. So the 
Turkey Leg Hut, the restaurant started to make a dress code. They said, listen, you have to come in here dressed what we deem a pro. This is a family oriented restaurant. We have couples that come here. We got married couples that come here. We got children. We got families that come here. We got elderly people that come here. You have to come in here dressed properly. You know what this Negro woman going to do with her big behind? This black woman gets naked and walks into the Turkey Leg Hut restaurant as a defiance to the dress code. Now, this is a similar situation. Now, right here, you got this ambassador of the heathen. This ambassador of the heathen comes to Matthias Maccabees and said, Sacrifice on the altar of the swine's flesh. The restaurant, the white man tried to shut the restaurant down because it's a successful black owned restaurant. That didn't work. So here come a, here come a naked Negro woman. She going to walk up in a restaurant butt naked as a defiance to the dress code of the restaurant. You see how much self-hatred our people got for each other. Why would you do that? To your own brothers and sisters restaurant. And they said the day that the woman walked in there naked. There were children and families in the restaurant. There probably were elderly people in there and everything. And guess what? I wouldn't be surprised if the white man didn't put her up to do that. So right here. The Greek ambassador comes to try to get Matthias to sacrifice the swine. So he can sell out in front of all the people. So they can destroy all of Israel. He says, no, I'm not going to go against the traditions of my forefathers. Here come a simple, evil, wicked Negro. And he's going to sacrifice the swine's flesh on the altar. He's going to walk up into the turkey leg hut butt naked. You see how people are from ancient history towards each other? Unbelievable, but yet believable because we're reading it. It said, um... One, uh, first Maccabees 2 23 again. Now, when he had left speaking those words, there came one of the Jews in the sight of all to sacrifice on the altar which was at Modin, according to the king's commandment. Which thing, when Matthias saw, he was inflamed with zeal. That fiery zeal came in him. Like I said, Jeremiah 5, 14, the Most High's word is like fire. If we keep his word in us, we will keep the righteous fire in us. He said, which thing when Matthias saw, he was inflamed with zeal. That zeal and fire of righteousness in him for the Most High's laws, he could not hold back. Seeing a wicked Negro going to come and sacrifice swine's flesh on the altar after he shut down the heathen ambassador and said, we're not going to sacrifice the swine's flesh. Here come a simple Negro to do it anyway. Here come a nasty Negro woman to walk up in the restaurant butt naked. After we said we have a dress code and we have families here. After the white man tried to shut the restaurant down because it's, it's a successful black owned so-called business, a Judite owned business. Here come a nasty, naked Negro woman. Look the story up, y'all. Look up woman, woman walks into Houston restaurant naked to defy the dress code. You probably didn't even got to type that much in to come out. Nasty Negro woman. Just to defy and be negative and disrespectful and evil towards her own people. Like this swan sacrificing Negro right here. All right, reading on. Uh, 24 again, which thing when Matthias saw he was inflamed with zeal, that fire came in him and his range trembled. Neither could he forbear to show his anger according to judgment. Wherefore, he ran and slew him upon that altar. And, you know, when I when I saw that news story, that's what I felt like doing to that woman. I know even though we can't exercise that judgment right now because of the laws of the land, I felt like killing that woman. Honestly, most I forgive me. But you go to such level of wit. You, you know what? In my mind, it came in my mind to put that damn woman to death because there were children in that. People's babies was in that restaurant. I have a two-year-old. I have a, a two-year-old. 
I have a six-year-old, I have an eight-year-old, and a 10-year-old. I don't want to be sitting in a restaurant with my family eating, and here comes some naked-ass black woman with her naked ass walking through the restaurant. That's why the most I gave us clothes to cover our bodies. The only one supposed to see your nakedness is your spouse. Your children are not even supposed to see you naked. But this black woman to defy, defy her own people, and she probably did it for the white man. She going to walk in the middle of the afternoon into the restaurant butt naked. You know, same thing. This Negro going to come and sacrifice the swine's flesh in front of his people like the hell with what you just said. You see how nasty and disrespectful we could be to one another? So, uh, uh, Matthias couldn't hold back. He slew that Negro. He said, listen, I know. He said, he said he couldn't forbear to show his um, anger caught in the judgment. He couldn't hold back. He said, look at this Negro with the disrespect. That's how I felt with that woman. You, you don't care. You want to make a, a you want to defy your brother and sister, the, 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 the um, rules that they try to set up for their business. You hate your own people and jealous and envious and spiteful so bad. You don't even care about people's children being in there. I would never walk in front of nobody's children, people naked. I wouldn't walk in nobody in front of nobody naked. Only one going to see me naked, supposed to see you naked is your spouse, your wife. Or your husband if you're a woman. You're not even, like I said, you're not even supposed to be naked in front of your children. Nobody. But she going to walk naked in front of her. You see how people are? Similar situation that we read here. This nigga just going to come up there and sacrifice the swine's flesh. He don't care. See how people are? Evil and wicked as hell. All right. So I just brought that out because the sister Wanda, she mentioned um, the fire in Jeremiah's bones. And, and that's, like I said, that's a whole nother level to this class because they're, like I just read with uh, Matthias, there are examples of our people's zeal being like fire. And that's, that's the zeal, that's the fire I'm talking about. The zeal, the endurance, the diligence, the perseverance, the long suffering, the consistency. That's the fire I'm talking about, the endurance. But I wanted to attack it from the level of zeal and diligence and endurance and slothfulness as opposed to being diligent and, and, and um, being consistent. All right. Um, real quick. We don't have to get it. But I quoted the scripture. So let me read it. Um, Jeremiah 5. And. Uh, Jeremiah 5. And. 14, I believe it is. Five and... Yeah, on Jeremiah 5, 14. Wherefore, thus saith Yahweh, power of hosts, because ye speak this word, behold, I will make my words in thy mouth fire, and this people would, and it shall devour them. See, this word is fiery, man. Why do you think the people out there get mad and want to and wanna fight us and, and hurt us and beat us? Because this word be burning them up. Right? You, you teaching that word with that zeal, with that strength, that power, it be cutting and burning their spirit up. And that's that fire in you ex exercising the Most High's word. Remember Revelation 11. It said we're going to be able to call actual fire from heaven. And the fire also represents destruction. If any man hurt the prophets of the Lord, they're going to call fire from heaven. Most High will give us spiritual power to have people put the death on a spot. All right, so uh, let me get this last one. Second Ezra 2 and 40. Second Ezra 2, and we're going to start at 40. It said, take thy number, O Zion, and shut up those of thine that are clothed in white, which shall fulfill the law of Yahweh. The number of thy children whom thou longest for is fulfilled. But cease the power of Yahweh, that thy people which have been called from the beginning may be hollowed. So you got to keep the fire. You got to keep the endurance to get the number. The most I want 
144,000 elect sealed, and then the one third, the general population of Israel, that's going to be of the uh, of the people. All right, you got the governing body and then the general population. 144,000 is the governing body. One third is the general population. That could be millions, billions, depending on how many Israelites on the earth and the one third of that nation portion that the most are going to save. Uh, 42, second Ezra 242. I, Ezra, saw upon the Mount Zion a great people whom I could not number. That's the one third. When you say, well, how, you, how you, you can't number them, but it's one third of them. One third meaning it's one out of every three Israelites. We don't know the exact number. It could be millions, billions, whatever, however many Israelites on the earth, the Lord will only save a third of them. All right, so that's why we say we, we don't know the number, but the portion is, there is a difference between a portion and a number. The portion is one third. The number is innumerable. All right? It says, um, uh, uh, 42, I, Ezra, saw upon, uh, I read that. Uh, 43, and in the midst of them, there was a young man of high stature, talking about Yahweh Shai, taller than all the rest. And upon every one of their heads, he set crowns and was more exalted, which I marvel at greatly. He's going to give us our position, our reward, and our rulership uh, in the kingdom. He answered and said unto me, these be they that have put off the mortal clothing and put on the immortal and have confessed the name of Yahweh. Now are they crowned and receive palms, right? Remember, uh, in St. John, they waved palms when Yahweh Shai came into the city on the, on the ass's coat. And they said, Hosanna, blessed be he who cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna means save now. I think that's in St. John 12. We don't have to get it, but um, they have palms in their hand. And they said, save now or Hosanna. Right, they was they was um, greeting Yahweh Shai into the city, and they said, "We hope you're coming to save us now." Right, but it says uh, they have palms in their hand here. Then said I unto the angel, "What young person is it that crowneth them and giveth them palms in their hands?" Uh, you know, like uh, the churches, the Catholic Church have Palm Sunday, but that's not a um, that's traditions of men. That palm waving was just something they did to honor Yahweh Shai. Riding into the city on an ass's coat because that was actually prophecy being fulfilled pursuant to, um, I think it's Micah. I believe it's the book of Micah, chapter 9. But, uh, you know, we can go into all that in the future. I'm just quoting here, but getting back to the main point of the lesson. All right, it says, He answered and said unto me, These be, be they that have put off the mortal clothing and put on the immortal and have confessed the name of Yahweh. Now are they crowned and receive palms. Then said I unto the angel, What young person is it that crowneth them and giveth them palms in their hands? So he answered and said unto me, It is the son of Yahweh. It's talking about Yahweh Shah is not in the Old Testament. Who else is this talking about? It said, It is the son of God, which we know to be Yahweh, whom they have confessed in the world. We kept the fire and we taught the gospel in the spirit of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. Whom they have confessed. I say we because I want to be part of that number. Then began I greatly to commend them that stood so stiffly for the name of Yahweh. They stood firm. They kept that fire, endurance, zeal, consistency, long suffering unto the end. All right. Then the angel said unto me, go thy way and tell my people what manner of things and how great wonders of Yahweh, thy power thou hast seen. By Shema Mashiach Yahushai. See that? So it said, then he commended them that stood stiffly for the Lord. So if you keep that fire, that zeal, that endurance unto the end, you're going to receive a crown on your head and receive the kingdom. And personally, personally, be given your position by Yahweh Shai. By Shema Mashiach Yahweh Shai. All right, come here, Sha'Allah. All praise to Yahweh by Shema Mashiach Yahweh Shai. All right, so keep the fire in this truth. Stay on fire in this truth, Israel. By Shema Mashiach Yahweh Shai. So let's get a couple of new moon scriptures and we're going to close it out. Let's go to Numbers 28 and 11. Come here, Sha'Allah.
All right, Numbers 28 and 11. All right. And it reads thus and so. And in the beginnings of your months, ye shall offer a burnt offering unto Yahweh, two young bullocks and one ram, seven lambs of Salaka, seven lambs of the first year without spot. Um, we're going to jump down to 14. I can read 12 and 13 on your own. And their drink offering shall be half a hen of wine unto a bullock. And the third part of an hen unto a ram. And a fourth part of an hen unto a lamb. This is the burnt offering of every month throughout the months of the year. So every new moon, there was supposed to be a certain amount of offerings burnt to the Most High. Along with the daily sin offering and the evening and morning sacrifice that we did every day. These were extra offerings that was to be burnt because it was on um, feast days. Uh, verse 15, and one kid of the goats for a sin offering unto the Lord Yahweh shall be offered beside the continual burnt offering and his drink offering. See that? So on every new moon, we had a certain amount of sacrifices and offerings that we were supposed to burn to the most high. Of course, we not we don't do that now. We're not under that now. Shalom Baruch. Baruch Yashal is in the building. Shalom King. Kwame Yashal. You know, we are the living sacrifice, Romans 12 and 1, 1 and 2. So uh, the sacrificial offerings will be reestablished in the kingdom. But this is what we did each new moon. We burnt the offering to the Most High. Now we are the living offering and sacrifices unto the Most High. Just us coming together to acknowledge the new moon, that sacrifice to Yahweh Hashem and Mashiach Yahweh So let's go from there to, um, let's go to Second Chronicles 2 and 4. Second Chronicles chapter 2 and verse 4. Write these um, scriptures in your arsenal. All right. New moon scriptures. Your guy in the building. Khan. H-O-I-L-A. Call me a shala. Happy new, happy new brew moon. Eighth month. All right. <laughs> Crazy camp Saturday night. Ak. <laughs> Damn Hollywood demons, man. Brother, your guy was out there on the post holding it down. Making sure the elder was protected and all the brethren. Come here, Shalom. But anyway, no folly, no folly. Back to the scripts. Second Chronicles 2 and 4. Behold, I build a house to the name of Yahweh my power, to dedicate it to him, and to burn before him sweet incense, and for the continual showbread, and for the burnt offerings morning and evening, on the Sabbaths and on the new moons, and on the solemn feast of Yahweh our power. This is an ordinance forever to Yasha Allah. See that? So um, even during the time of Solomon, when he made the temple, he said, I'm going to burn the offerings on the set feast and the new moons. All right, let's go to Judith 8 and 6 in the Apocrypha. Judith chapter 8 and verse 6. We're just going to get a few, y'all. <clears throat> y'all should know the new moon scriptures. If not, look them up. Go back to some of our old lessons. And get your new moon scriptures. Judith 8 verse 6. Y'all can read 1 through 5 on your own. Matter of fact, you can read the whole 8th chapter on your own and get the understanding. Read the whole story on your own and get the understanding. Judith 8 and 6. And she fasted all the days of her widowhood. Save the ease of the Sabbaths and the Sabbaths. And the ease of the new moons and the new moons. And the feasts and solemn days of the house of Yasha Allah. So Judith... Fasted uh, all the days throughout her widowhood, three and a half years, except for the feast days and Sabbaths and new moons. So this sister was on a high level of doing a lot of fasting to help her, to help strengthen her in her widowhood and her mourning for her husband. But the eves of the Sabbaths and new moons and feast days, you know, she came off and she celebrated with Israel and feasted. All right. That was during the time of Judith. Uh, during the ancient time, all right? So, um, from there, where are we going to go? Let's go to uh, Luke, all right? Let's go to New Testament, Luke 21 and 25, right? We're going to go to Luke 21 and 25. And it reads thus and so. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations. Nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. And that's what we're seeing now. We're seeing signs in the earth. 
We see in different eclipses, different signs in the heavens, many chariot sightings. I mean, I mean, I get, I get shared chariot sightings and stories at least two or three times out of the week now. Chariots being seen all over the place because those are the vehicles of the Heavenly Father that's coming to deliver Israel. It said the, the nations in distress, they in perplexity, they in confusion. The sea and the waves roaring, the nations in an uproar. Every time you turn around, North Korea firing on South Korea. They launching a missile over uh, Japan. All right, uh, Vladimir Putin talking more tough talk. He bombing Ukraine more. All kinds of troops being dispatched to different parts of the world. Because why? It's, it's, it's leading up to the Third World's War. I know Israel, I said, I know, don't, I said, don't send me no story until they talking about nukes and chariots. But it's still all a prelude. The nations are, are the sea and the waves are in the uproar, meaning the nations. The Most High is stirring them up. 